Is it time for 20? The players know it. All the fans know it. And look at the close calls you're talking about in Ohio State in the semis, 18-16. And then the lead in the finals against Long Beach State in the fourth. They should have wrapped it up then. John Sprouse said he didn't know until about last week that the players had taken the picture of them when the final ball went down in the semis last year and put it up on the bulletin board in the locker room. That's been their mission all year long is to avenge that moment. On the other side of the net for Hawaii, this is a team that has played like a two-time champion. You don't always see that. This is the same group that won last year, but they play with confidence and poise. They're almost impossible to rattle, even in the face of a semifinal challenge from Penn State, who was exceptional two nights ago and pushed them to five sets. They may struggle with opponents once in a while, but they're never looking rattled or off balance. I, I didn't do the Google Maps search, but I think we're about 5,000 miles away from Honolulu in round figures. This feels a little bit like a home match. 2,200 Hawaii fans have made the long, long trek. In some instances, 14 hours with layovers to come here to watch their beloved Rainbow Warriors. Again, the champions of the Big West, they tied the regular season, only two losses on the year. They split with Long Beach State. They lost to Penn State, so they avenged that in the semifinals on Thursday. UCLA split with Penn State and also the loss to uh, uh, Hawaii earlier in the year. Demetrius Nucleus at the outside, or the opposite position is gonna be a real key matchup. Can he get slowed down by UCLA? And here's Jakob Telle, he's gonna start out serving. You'll see both setters are deadly from the line, but Telle is in a class of his own, left-handed. And this is a lead on the scouting report, his serve. First serve for the NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship. Out of system and an awkward start right now for UCLA. Mucleus off the edge of the block and out of bounds. You asked John Sparrow a great question earlier today. What are you most concerned with? He said, number one, Jakob Tella from the service line. Number two, Jakob Tella from the service line. Number three, I'm repeating myself, Jakob Tella from the service line. I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> well, he had two aces in the match in Honolulu, but was consistently putting on pressure. Right, it's not just the aces. It's not just what shows up. It's what do you pass against him. Like overpass. this overpass. That won't go down as an ace, but it should. He's the all-time leader, career leader in aces with 121 at the University of Hawaii, the fifth-year senior, as you saw, out of Norway. And he is a physical setter. He is a wonderful athlete. Six foot six, leads the nation in assists. Ooh, that ball was left a little inside, but Ido David out of Israel, the six foot seven sophomore, puts the ball away. He's the answer at the opposite for Timucleus. Yeah, it took a lot of smart swings back in the semifinal. Really an impressive performance and hit more impressive when John Strauss told us he was sick as a dog on Thursday night, not feeling well. He's feeling better. Keep an eye on him if this goes to a knockdown, drag out, four or five set match. See if he fades. Had 17 kills on 24 swings in the semifinal win over Long Beach State. by Champlin, and here is David out of the back row working on Nucleus. Key play there is Champlin. A swing gets made, Champlin's in a good spot, and Ethan Champlin is the engine that makes this UCLA machine go. He absolutely does everything. You'll see him get key swings on the outside, despite being one of the smallest players on the floor for the Bruins. David, one of those nine first-team All-Americans on the floor in this championship, plays for the Israeli national team, averaging 3.6 kills per set. And that's going to be a net violation, which will nullify a pretty nice dig by UCLA. Guillerme Voss out of Brazil in the middle with a kill. There's Spiros Hakos, also out of Greece, 6'4 junior, last year in their championship win over Long Beach State. He was the tournament's most outstanding player. Good block touch by Voss. Hakas on the pipe. And you're gonna see Hawaii use the middle of the court in transition a lot more than they will inside out on that big attack, that pipe attack. And that not only is an important point here early in his first set, they wanna get Hakas going. He had a rough semifinal hit below 100. So the more offense they got to him early and put him in rhythm, the better. Eight out of 26 
with six errors and coming right back at you. Guy Guinness also out of Israel with a kill for UCLA. 6'5 redshirt sophomore. Conference freshman of the year last year and going back now is Alex Knight. We're in number 12 in Bruin Blue, six foot six senior out of Culver City, California. Six kills on 11 swings, only one error against the 49ers of Long Beach State. A little more middle attack, no touch there. That ball missed out of bounds. What was wrong with the connection? I think that ball came a little bit off the net, and so it ended up kind of inside of Voss's frame rather than out in front of him where he could get a hold of it. Two best offensive teams in the country, as mentioned. UCLA led the way at 383. Hawaii not far behind at 370. Perfect reception. One on one on the outside. Smart shot by number one, Chaz Galloway. Galloway out of San Diego. He struggled a little bit through the first half of the year, but during Big West Conference play, he had over 400 and really good in reception as well. Smart shot. And we talked about the development of the Hawaii program over the last few years. Chaz Galloway has been a large part of that. He looks so comfortable now in the entire game. Here is Voss, first team All American this year, second team last year out of Rio de Janeiro. Unforced error, one on each side in the middle connection. A little bit of nerves, maybe? Maybe, yeah. maybe. That ball's a little low. It takes usually about 10 points for your side to kind of mellow out, work your way into the match, and then it's just another match. Boss, a good server for a middle blocker, usually kind of a liability going with a jump float here. Out of system for the Bruins. Couple of ball control errors back to David. Going to see a steady, steady diet of both opposites. And UCLA excited to get out of that rotation. We'll talk about the big jump serves, but this straight ahead float serve has given them trouble. So they're happy to get out of that rotation, get the float server that, that straight ahead from Guillermo Voss off the line. Coach Spira of UCLA spent a good bit of time this morning yep. in their serve and pass, talking about exactly that, the serve by Boss and the jump float down the line. And having the scout team execute that, the second team hit that against the number one team passers. Demetrius Muklia, 6'6", junior out of Greece. Four kills per set, number eight in the nation, number six in the country in hitting percentage at 395. Only a junior, but this is his last match for Hawaii. He's turning pro after this. Nice joust by Rowan to keep the play alive. Not a good set in transition by Hawkes. Unforced error, Hawaii. I like the aggression, though. I like the aggression of that swing. My move is I'll take that. He really excels at generating forward momentum in a very small time frame. He only needs one step, and he'll move forward into the ball to generate some force. Andrew Rowan, an amazing story. Six foot six, fresh, six, six freshman out of Tribuco Canyon. First team All-American. And he serves that ball out of bounds. But John Spira had a really good setter in Miles Partain. And he decided to leave the team. He was the MPSF Conference Player of the Year last year. And still, John Spira said Rowan was so good. I just had to recruit him. And I said, you got him, you got him with your charm. And he said, I don't care what it was, but I'm awfully glad to have Andrew Rowan in a Bruin uniform. Outstanding. Oh, what a block! One on one out of the middle. Cole Hoagland, only six foot four, but only needed one big hand to swat this one down. I think he's got a Randy Sokos Fila tank top on, doesn't he? Is that, that what he's wearing? That was an old style call. Woo! Brilliant block that time by Hoagland. Right back to him and going over the top of the block that time is McHenry. Merrick McHenry, six foot seven, redshirt junior out of Bedford, Texas. And what you need to notice here is the tempo. A very slow tempo into the, the tempo into the middle blocker with McHenry. It's gonna be a what a one and a half or maybe even a two with his height. He struggled a little bit in the match against Long Beach State, but on the year he's number one in the nation in terms of hitting efficiency. Here is Ethan Chapin, Chaplin, excuse me, six foot three junior out of Oceanside, California. Both teams getting a lot of block touches. Nice dig by Gooch. Oh, 
Troy Gooch, six foot red shirt senior, wearing the white Libro jersey and a Buffalo, New York, making a brilliant play here defensively. Nice and still, perfect reaction, and then that quick attack back. You got to know when to use the right weapon. What a choice by Rowan. Hawaii leading by only one. Out of system here, chance for the Bruins to top. David again unloading. You know, the early force here on the right-hand side, but again, it's Champlin in a good spot, digs that ball up and allows the offense some tempo to the right side. Another smooth delivery from Rowan. UCLA doing what they did on Thursday night, block and defense leading to transition points. It looks really good in that combination, that symbiosis between the two phases of the game at the net and defensively in the back row. Three nothing run for UCLA and Champlin on the back row. Quick combination. Both teams serving well, but receiving even better. If you want to know how far the college game has come, look at the last few plays here. Look at the speed, the tempo. Watch some of the footwork of the players. It's no accident that you see imitation of international players because that video is available like never before over this last generation of players. They study it, they embody it, and you see it on the floor. Quickly right back at you. Beautiful kill on the outside by Knight. That looked like, on that back row quick combination, volleyball fans, that looked like a young Chiba there you go. when Brazil was just coming up with a back row quick combination. Look it up, kids. It's on, uh, I think it's in a tablet somewhere. Someone put it in, the stone tablet, the Jiba. Or Murillo. <laughs> yeah. Or Reed Pretty. That's a long time ago now. Or Aaron Russell. There you go. There's Current. One on one. That's what Jakob Tella can do. He took an average pass and created a one on one advantage. Jakob Tella is a professional level setter who happens to still be stuck in college. That is just the way it is. He's, he's really, he's really stuck in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> but we asked, why did he come back? Important here at the service line. I'll finish that thought after this service. Good pass. David again. Jakob Tella is in his fifth year. He got a COVID year. He could have turned pro last year, no question about it. He would have had a lot of professional teams around the globe bidding for his services. But an exceptional student, and he thought that this group had a unique opportunity. And they have lived out that dream to go for three in a row. And he's been a huge part of it since the beginning. Good ball control by both teams. Block touches, off touches. Until there. Oh, the fake offensively yeah. threw it off a little bit. UCLA's block is soft touching a lot of balls right now. And that ball tucked inside. David has gone inside the block several times. What's that about Hawaii's block? Three times. Hawaii has to seal the net. Stop reaching so high. Push your hands over. If you get off the top of your fingers, he gets killed fine. Stop letting him hit the ball low and have success. You've got to seal the net first before you worry about getting those high touches. He goes over you. OK, fine. Ido David now six of eight. UCLA is a team hitting 400. Hawaii at 312 early. And Ido David's gotten a lot of work in this first set. He is breathing hard even still here with a pretty significant delay. Remember, under the weather, and we asked yeah. Coach Barra about that, and he just had a viral infection, cold or flu. It wasn't specific, but really not feeling well. Oh, what a dig by Champlin. Patrolling center field. Say no more. What a choice by Tella. And Voss knew he had to make himself available. Oh, Voss does this all the time. Yeah. He knows that he will be found by Jakob Tella if he just gets up. Hakas averaging 3.4 kills per set, 37 aces on the year. Again, outstanding player, most outstanding player, last year's championship. But really struggled the other night. Off the top of the block again, and there's already been a substitution. J.R. Norris, 6'5", redshirt senior out of Lancaster, California, has come in for UCLA. And this is a both very, very talented team. But UCLA probably, or do they have the advantage in terms of depth and options? I believe they do, yeah. And you can bring in Norris, who is a 12-year vet here in NCAA Volleyball. 
He's hitting 582 on the year. He's been in school six years. He's had a really nice senior season. Champlin working inside and Schuert. Brett Schuert, the outstanding libero for Hawaii out of Newport Beach, number four in the green libero jersey. Would like to have that one back. UCLA leading it 14 to 12. We will have the media timeout when a team reaches 15. Good block touch, perfect reception. Good play by UCLA, just better that time by Galloway off the outside. Well, it's a late move from Rowan. He just kept digging on that play. I think he's a little late getting there, but put his hands up, nearly had a soft enough touch to generate a transition. Rowan, the 6'6 freshman, first team All-American, as mentioned, came in as the number 15 recruit. I think he probably should have been a little higher than that. And here is Keone Tim, serving specialist. He's gone as fast as 76 miles per hour and UCLA will take a sigh of relief as that one drifts long here at Eagle Bank Arena on the campus of George Mason University. Just underway, the 53rd Men's NCAA Volleyball Championship. We got a timeout here in Fairfax. Opening set for the championship, UCLA, 19 times an NCAA title holder on top of Hawaii, 15 to 13. These teams have played a lot of times during the course of volleyball history. March 11th, we talked about that. Hawaii coming out on top three to one. UCLA used to go out for that outrigger tournament all the time because who doesn't want to schedule a trip to Hawaii? <laughs> Penn State was there. They were yeah. willing to make that trip. But you look at the overall series, UCLA with a big lead, but Hawaii has won four out of the last five meetings as Norris coming off the bench again for John Spira and UCLA will continue to serve. A couple of good 3 nothing runs for the Bruins have given this, them this advantage 15-13. And that one off the top of the tape. Possession and point go back to Hawaii. And Norris is one of those options available to John Spira off his bench. He has a couple of them. You might, in fact, see Cooper Robinson at outside hitter. A talented player. Zach Rama, six Zach foot Rama. ten freshman yeah. out of uh, the Phoenix area. His had three a, very capable subs. Yeah, had a very, Rama had a very very big match coming off the bench in Honolulu. In that one, he was 12 of 19 at Hawaii. I gave him six ten. He probably will be. He's only six eight right now. Rowan will go back to serve. The Bruins leading 16 14. And look at the clip they're hitting at 435. Hawaii not bad, but 100 points behind right now. Mucleus just accurately down the line away that time away from Gooch. I was talking to Josh Walker last night, assistant former Hawaii player. He said that this is what he's always had, that straight ahead wrist away move down the line, which most opposites have on the right. So the thing that's made Demi really dangerous over this last year is he can not only do that, but also watch him tattoo the 10 foot line over in position two. He'll pull it hard cross court. Great save by Champlin. Oh, and a better block. Hoagland along with Tilly working on Ido Davi. Both these setters can be a presence at the net. Tilly along with Hoagland, look at that. He is absolutely in the right position. He was waiting inside, saw the set, identified it early, and got to the hitter. That's the eye sequence. You got to go setter, ball, hitter. 3 0 run now for Hawaii, tied at 16. I called Jakob Tilly. I was thinking. I was thinking about uh, Tilly, the fa fantastic coach for France. And Rama's in the match now for UCLA. So already John Spira, why not? No tomorrow. Tomorrow they get a break. But uh, right now going to his bench with J.R. Norris. He's come in in the middle. And Zach Rama wearing number 21 in blue for the Bruins. Yeah, that was a blocking sub. Ido David now back into the front yeah. row. He'll move back to the right front. He's in the middle right now with Merrick. And Alex Knight, big front row.
Nucleus again down the line. What kind of adjustments should the Bruins make against that really potent line shot? Well, it's a tough one because do you pull yourself all the way to the line to try and shut that down and then you give up the cross court? I think here, that's just a good swing. You made not a bad move. You're a little late. They gave some tempo and he hit that ball high. And I'll tell you right now, the best swing beats the best block every time. Gooch moving way in behind the block. Might want to make an adjustment there. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not digging that ball. Though. No, no. One of that the other thing's coming head high. Kanai Akana, six foot five senior out of Honolulu, comes in. Two serving specialists come off the bench for Charlie Wade. We've already seen Thim, and now we're seeing Akana. Both have been top shelf in huge moments this season. 18th error on the season for Akana. Free ball, where is Teller going to go? He takes a look. Knight going high hands off the Hawaii block and out of bounds, that one off of Guillerme Voss. And this is a very typical response by Hawaii. Down a few points, middle of the set. A lot of teams will kind of give up three more points, and all of a sudden they're out of the set. Hawaii cannot rattle them, and they are right back here at level. Well, they were really pushed to the limit, particularly from the service line by Penn State, who had 12 aces. But they just stay together. Good pass by Galloway. Hittable ball by Hawkes. Smart shot up into the block. Recycle. That one a little bit too low against a three-man block for the Bruins. Hawkes is stuck. Hawkins had a good idea here. He's trying to pull the line, but he'll drop his elbow just a little bit and tries to drive it through the line, but all three blockers were there. You have to turn that one a little bit more. The public address announcer says that there was a timeout taken by UCLA. I think that is incorrect. Yeah, we've got a Hawaii challenge, possibly on a net violation against the Bruins. We have not been able to find out, at least for the moment, what the situation is in terms of who's challenging. Rachel Jensen is the second referee. Ron Pelham is the number one official. Net violation, net violation called against the UCLA Bruins. That's good work by the Hawaii coaching staff keeping an eagle eye at Eagle Bank Arena. Yeah, we'll get a better angle on it here. It might be nice. Yeah, there it is. Right so, at the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was either Norris, but I think it was David. Well, now that shot was especially smart to keep the point going. Got to make a call here. Wow. They called Andrew Rowan for being a back row blocker. Yeah, Ron Pelham, I don't know about this one. We'll have to take a look at it from the net cam. I'm not sure. Location of that ball from where we sit, it looked like Rowan had rights to it. Yeah, if it's in the plane, whoever gets to it first, and it looked like Rowan got there, and you cannot block the set. And that play is not reviewable and now we are going to have a UCLA timeout. So a nice run by the Rainbow Warriors. Hawaii now leading 20 to 18. And well we've got this timeout in the opening set. I want to remind you about NCAA.com, the home of all the championships, the 2023 NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship taking place this weekend in Gulf Shores, Alabama, tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN. The national champion will be crowned. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. What do you think we've seen so far? Back and forth, UCLA on a couple of runs, but as you mentioned, Hawaii never going to be rattled. Uh, both teams have been uh, hitting the ball at a very high level. Either win or lose, they've been high-level swings. You look at how elite they have been since 2015. Hawaii, the best team. And, of course, four straight appearances. A lot of titles 
UCLA is still struggling for that. They're the first team since 81 to 84. That was the Bruins that made four straight championship matches and the first team in 40 years looking to go back to back to back. It was also the legendary UCLA Bruins of Dave Saunders, Steve Sammons, Karch Kirai, Ricky Ludes that won not only three in a row, but ended up winning four in a row. First since the title match in 1998, here comes Tella again. John Sparrow's biggest concern is number 10 in black for Hawaii from the service line, as well as when he's setting the ball. Free ball for Hawaii, didn't do much with it. And that ball is out of bounds. Boy, to me, Kevin, that's a big break for UCLA. Free ball, and Hawaii didn't play it cleanly. Well, this ball comes off the block, and it's a tough pickup. That ball's blocked down. They just could not bring it back up. I think that's a valiant effort. But we're right where we all thought we'd be here in this first set ball. 20 to 19, UH was down early. They've come back. UCLA now is trying to answer. They have a point score at the line. But no aces so far. No, both teams, set, yeah? both teams have really settled in, but that ball missed out of bounds by Hawkes. Just that one from Hawaii about third of the way, or two thirds of the way into the set. So this has been an exhibition of teams fighting off balls and playing fairly well. We haven't had a lot of miss serves either. Timeout called by Hawaii, tied at 20 apiece. Coming up tonight on ABC, we'll have the Western Conference semifinals. Game three between the Warriors and the Lakers series tied. At a game apiece, the countdown crew tips off our pregame coverage at 8 Eastern time. Lakers won the first meeting in San Francisco, not in Oakland any longer for the Golden State Warriors. And then Steph and Clay came flying back and made easy work of it. I turned it off when they were up by 30 the other night. So that's game three coming up on ABC. Back with Kevin Barnett, two-time Olympian and All-American at Pepperdine. Your thoughts so far? The key to beating UCLA is to keep them below 300. That's not happening right now. UCLA is hitting 379 to 258 from UH. But both teams have been a little bit streaky back and forth with blocking, with tough and good off plays. This is what we want to see. I think the last few points here are going to hinge on can somebody crank it up from the service line just a little bit. And that may be in clean aces, but more than likely, it means the opportunity to gang up on a hitter and get a soft touch for an easy return of attack in transition. Which team is going to spend the rest of this opening set tied at 20? In the red zone now, 20 and above. Who's going to be out of system? Who can control the ball? And who can take some risks successfully? From know, the service line. I know Charlie Wade felt like UCLA needed the easy points. They need the aces. That wasn't the case on Thursday. They were transitioning balls with lethal efficiency. UCLA's ball control against Long Beach State was about the best I've seen all year. Off the top of the tape, Tella is there. Out of system swing. There's that soft touch. Now you got to convert. Missed out of bounds. First eight swings. Ido David with no errors. Now he's taken 12 swings. Got stuffed once and hit that ball out of bounds. And now that time, a break for Hawaii. David again, did he get a touch? No touch detected, back-to-back -back balls out of bounds. Timeout UCLA. Hawaii feeling a little bit more comfortable after coming out of that timeout. Now on top of the Bruins, UCLA out of timeouts. And speaking of that, timeout yesterday, except for some brief practice for both of the teams in the finals. And the University of Hawaii came a long way to our nation's capital and certainly enjoyed a beautiful day, as did we yesterday at the White House and at the Capitol there on the mall. One Lincoln saying hello to another. <laughs> And who brought the hat? Gary and Tim, is that yours? Or did you find that somewhere? They had them in the concession store in the Capitol, but I, I just didn't go that <laughs> route. Yeah, what an opportunity for these young men to come and enjoy the nation's capital and then take a shot at a national title. I like the way the schedule's set up. You need a day off in between to rest and recover, certainly after a five-setter for Hawaii. 
and set up for a really nice championship match. It's been a good first set for UCLA. They need to get the side out and they get right back to that formula that they had moments ago. Ido David, right, he's been a, lo a lot of the offense here in the first set. He has 12 attempts. Next highest person is seven, and that's a guy who, like we said, we're going to watch in terms of what he has in the gas tank. Back-to-back -back errors, I don't think you go to him again. I think you go to the outside here. That's going to be night. Is it too much, David? This is a UCLA team, first in the nation in offense, and very, very well balanced. No, because he opened up hot, so you keep going to him. Free ball for Hawaii, looking for the largest lead by either team in this opening set. Back row, quick combination, look out. Transition, this is where the Bic will get you. Both outside blockers are spread out. That's a dream scenario for any top flight outside hitter coming out of that middle back. Here comes Hawkes. That was his fourth kill on 12 swings after struggling on Thursday night. Had some issues with a calf and good side out. J.R. Norris and delivery that time from Rowan. UCLA needs two here. They got to tie it at 23. I don't think they have any choice. Hawaii is not a team that's going to get to 24 and then give you a few back. That is not going to happen. you got to score two right now. Here is Alex Knight, 15 aces on the year, but right now just looking for pressure. Got to get Tella off the net. Look at that set in transition. That ball set badly that time by Guillerme Voss. Really good serve to start things off by Knight, number 12 in blue. The full complement of timeouts being used here in the first set, Paul. We had a technical plus two for each coach. Timeout called by Hawaii. Now they are out of timeouts. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings update as teams compete for a combined $500,000 scholarship donation from Capital One on the men's side. Connecticut, after winning their National Basketball Championship. They are number two to Georgia, South Dakota State, Syracuse. And on the other side, Texas won the Women's NCAA Volleyball Championships. LSU won the Women's Basketball Championships. And UCLA, the number one seed on the beach. They will be in the semifinals tomorrow. Excuse me, the semifinals are concluded today, but we're, we're a little busy. <laughs> I will check on my computer in between the first and second set. Again, 2,200 loyal Rainbow Warrior fans made the trek from the islands here to near our nation's capital. Washington, D.C. was a, a short train ride away for us when we had a chance to go into D.C. on an absolutely beautiful spring day. The fandom that's built, built in Hawaii is a unique thing on the men's side. This is kind of the second peak for that program in terms of excitement in the community. One blocking sub called comes in for UCLA. 23 to 22, and you mentioned when Hawaii beat UCLA back in March in Honolulu, two of the sets went to overtime. It was very, very close, so this no surprise. Cole Kederzinski is in to block, so Andrew Rowan has come off. Watch to see who sets in transition. They may not need it. Brilliant serve again by Knight, and that ball's going to fall. Tied at 23. And I love the serve from Knight. We've talked a lot about serving over this weekend with coaches at different events, as well as you and I, Paul. We've talked about what you need to do when your team is scoring points and you need another. The end of a set like that, what did Cole do? He chopped it to a spot. He hit a very good serve to a tough area, and it resulted in a point for his side. He's got to do the same thing here. You can't miss. It doesn't need to be 100 miles an hour. It has to be something 60 miles an hour to your spot. There's plenty of space in front of Galloway. You could cut the ball straight ahead right now if that's in the toolbox. So 60 miles an hour is taking, <laughs> taking something off. Night again. Took a lot off of that one. Good pass by Hawkes. Boy, UCLA would like to have that one back. They really did a good job of getting some hands on Mucleus, but couldn't follow up. You did the work necessary. Now just side out. They get back to working for UCLA. For Hawaii, you want to close right now. And this is going to be that straight-ahead float serve. 
Champlin has stepped all the way up to the 10-foot line. See if this gives him trouble. Bet he gets it. Gooch there, the libero as well. The transfer from Purdue Fort Wayne. Been really good for UCLA. Gooch with a perfect pass. And down. The pass was pure, tied at 24. So one set point saved by the Bruins. I'm not going to mess around if I'm Jakob Tella. I'm going to Mucleus. Mucleus on the right side. Hoagland in the middle. He has a good option. He has three good options here offensively, but I'm still choosing Mucleus. Good pass by Hawkes. Twice to the middle by Tella. Yeah, good footwork, way to follow the ball by Hoagland on that second attack. It spun him around, and he just kept digging into that three ball. Hoagland, number seven, 6'4", junior out of Waimanalo. And again, both setters taking some risks going to the middle, Merrick McHenry getting the job done. Well, we talked about matchups. McHenry versus 6'4", Hoagland. He's going to have to jump if he's going to get there. Watch the height of this ball. That doesn't matter. You can jump all you want. You're not going to get him. some of those balls from number 13. McHenry came in as an opposite, has changed to the middle, and adopted it very, very comfortably. Good passing by Hawaii. Mucleus missed it out of bounds. Down the line again. Both teams out of timeouts. UCLA now with their first set point. And Mucleus telling Tele, give me the ball again. Give me the ball. He did it twice when he caught the eye of Jakob Tele. He just called for it again. Good serving by Rowan. Really good passing. Perfect reception. Back row, quick combination. That's been golden so far for Hawaii. Very difficult to defend. And they've used it quite a bit in this first set, more so than Thursday evening. Boy, Hawkins has been nails passing so far, number 23 in black. Big role why he's on the floor for Hawaii, among others. David. Off the edge and out of bounds. Got off to a very fast start. He was six out of his first eight. Now he's eight out of 13. UCLA as a team hit 343, Hawaii 282. And yeah, that delivery from, from setter Andrew Rowan was absolute money. He's fading back to the right-hand side of the court. He shot it on a line, still in tempo, but from about 50% further than it would normally travel. Second set point for UCLA. Hawaii has had two set points. There is Champlin, been relatively quiet so far, but really, really a good player. Top flight, very, very studious as John Sparrow describes, and that one might have been out. Free ball for UCLA. Once, twice, David, Ido David from the outside. Opening set goes to UCLA. They played four sets before. The margin of victory was plus three. It is no surprise to see them play their third overtime set of the year. That's the first set that Hawaii has lost in the championship match in three years. The Bruins and Ido David take the opener. Beautiful day here in Fairfax, Virginia. Welcome back to Eagle Bank Arena. We're about 20 minutes, 25 miles from the beautiful nation's capital. And in overtime, UCLA takes the opening set on the big right arm of Ido David with nine kills, Barney. You asked me, Paul, should you set somebody else or set less <laughs> of your opposite when he's off to a good start? No, you keep feeding him the ball. It is not a complicated game, to be honest. He hit 400 with those nine kills. And sometimes it's just about giving the guy the ball as long as he's hot. If he goes for 27 kills and hits 400 or 450 or 350 over the course of this match and you win 3-0, yeah, keep setting your guy who's hot. If that happens to be an outside hitter, give it to him. Look at the numbers through the first set, 368 from UCLA. That's right on the nose for them to have success. 
Hawaii, not far to go, obviously only a couple of points. I think the number that stands out for both teams, in my mind, is one ace apiece. Just one ace apiece. If somebody can break into that a little bit here in the second set, they will win it. And a total of five errors between the two teams. And there's an ace right away by J.R. Norris, the fourth. One of the numbers that also jumped out at me in the opening set. Hawaii is a magnificent offensive team, as are both of these, but they only sided out at 59%. That's a low number for them. Right, you want that to be up around 70 if you're really dominating. You know, Norris and Merrick, McHenry, both have been opposite hitters at times. That's what makes them dangerous from the line. The development there keeps you dangerous from the service line. Well, John Spira, speaking of Norris earlier today, said, you know, he probably should be a starter. He was early in the it, year. Exactly, and played a lot of volleyball as evidenced by his efficiency. 1.4 kills, hitting 582. But but I know I've got him to come off the bench. And uh, importantly now, <laughs> in that role, has gotten to help the Bruins to a one set to none lead. Here's Tella. Overpass, that is a ball handling, a rare ball handling mistake by Hawaii and Galloway. One of the things that also, when we looked at that match summary so far, UCLA, the number one blocking team in the country, okay, they don't have any stuffs, but they touched a lot of balls, really a lot. David's an interesting story. Shared the opposite spot or played behind Kevin Cobrine last year who transferred to USC and now this spot is certainly his and his alone and for that he was a first team All-American. Two critical things happened for John Spraw this year and Dan Friend on the Viral Bali podcast pointed out head coach at Lewis University. He said the subtraction was big for UCLA and that was both before the season as the beat goes along there with Kevin Coburn transferred as you just mentioned and then he had to play Edo to There was no debate. Kevin Coburn's a terrific player. He's kind of back and forth John Spraw with who do I put in there and at the setting position at the setting position mid-season who do they lose? Miles Partain. Miles Partain. And so then it just goes to Andrew Rowan. He's 100% in there, and he responded by becoming one of the top players in the conference, if not the best setter in the nation, were it not for the guy across the net from him tonight. Right. You talked about when we first came on the air, you mentioned it the first time about uh, Rowan being the heir apparent, not just at UCLA. He's going to have a good career there, but maybe the heir apparent for the United States going forward. Might be just in time for Micah Christensen, who's had an incredible yeah, international incredible. career to mentor him for a couple of years and then start and play. He won the U21 gold medal and was best setter just last summer. Yeah, fast track for that kid. Back row, quick combination. Very, very difficult. Hawaii would like to spend a lot more time in system, whether it be in transition or in first ball receive. Wide open net. Yeah, and that's been the case. And so we talk about riding the opposite on the Hawaii, or the UH side, pardon me, on the UCLA side, on Hawaii side. That keeps working. Set it more. Set it more. Hawkins having a nice opening to this championship match. I'll give you his numbers in just a moment. Champlin smartly off the edge of the block and down, but back to Hawkins. Six kills on 14 swings. Mucleus, who is clearly their go to, another first team All American. There are nine of them. He's only 5 of 15 with two errors, hitting 200. Here's McHenry. That kind of an unusual hybrid serve, but can be very, very dangerous. UCLA misses, on average, 5.2 serves per set. They've been very clean so far. Nice play by Hoagland out of the middle. More middle tonight than we saw in the semifinals from Hawaii. Well, they have been destabilized in the exact same way that Penn State destabilized them. Basically, Penn State came in here and hawaii Hawaii. Hawaii's a team is usually the aggressor from the line, and Penn State was on fire. The most aces Hawaii had given up all year was seven. They gave up 12, and they yep. gave up seven to one player alone. Penn State was really good. They were down two sets to none, won the third and fourth, and then Hawaii got stable again and then won the fifth set 15-10 over the Nittany Lions. Yeah, I saw some of the Nittany Lions staff last night, and I told them, I said, listen, only one team's season ends the way they want it. Right. But your season can end with you playing your top volleyball. Hey, that's what happened with Penn State. Yeah, Brett Wildman played maybe his best match of the year when it counted. Seven aces. There's a radar gun. We'll see what kind of speed Rowan is putting up. Thim, the fastest server that 
the backup, the serving. That was 67 miles per hour and missed that time by number seven, Andrew Rowan. You know, we talked about Partain deciding to leave the UCLA program and go play on the beach. But he was the conference player of the year last year as a reminder and led UCLA to the national semifinals before they narrowly, and I do mean narrowly, lost in the semis last year to Long Beach State. Boy, that's a really good combination. Boy, that is a brilliant gap set that had to cover about two-thirds of the net. And they like to run these little drift routes. This is a straight three here, no drifting about it, but he's going to come from the outside rather than the inside, so it's a little bit of a wrinkle on the three in that he's going to be outside to the left rather than inside to the right for that ball. Norris is a perfect four for four. Tellez in the front court, so he contacted that ball legally. Smart shot, really nice work by Knight number 12. Volleyball is all about the next contact. Can you clean up the contact before, or can you take full advantage? Here it's a cleanup. That's a little too fast for that play. I like that ball to be hung up a little bit, because by going fast, you're fooling no one by simply going fast right in front of you. Two blockers are there. Put the ball high. Give your hitter a chance to elevate and hit through the top of the block or over it. Here is Ethan Champlin, All-American again. Four for seven so far, hitting 571. A little more heat on that serve, but missed it. Out of bounds as far as the serving store from story from aces and errors. One ace for Hawaii, two errors. That's the sixth service error. Make it seven for UCLA against two errors as Hoagland will go back to serve. Back to the speed thing for just a second, Paul. I think everyone thinks pace gets you kills and that offense has to be faster. Listen, enough pace to maximize your hitter's height of attack, that's the real answer. Watch Hawaii. They don't set the fastest offense. They set the offense as best for the talents of their hitters. Cover by Gooch, back to David. Tattoos one down the line. David now in double figures, 10 kills on 18 swings. And if you're John Spry, you like this swing from Ido David because this is the one he missed two of in that first set. The little inside out, down the line. He botched two of them. That was the way Hawaii got up in the latter part of that first set. You'd like your guy who's on fire to get right back to having that as an option as well. UCLA won the opening set 28-26 here in the second on top by one. Boy, Norris is having an impact in a couple of phases. Knight down the line one-on-one. -on -one. Brilliant choice by Rowan. Uh, all set up, as you mentioned, by J.R. Norris, who had an ace in his first turn at the service line and darn near got one there. I like the long set. You know why? Because Guillermo Boss told me last night he was going to front Merrick McHenry. He's going to front him, so the long set is good. As soon as you see that, if you're Andrew Rowan, you should go long all the time whenever you get pushed out of that setting zone. Well, you mentioned that point about McHenry against Hoagland, but also Guillermo Boss against McHenry. you got to basically commit if you want to get a hand on his attack. No, you don't, because it's slow. And that's what I asked Guillermo Boss. He said, I said, are you going to commit at all? He said, I don't have to. The huh, ball is huh, slow. Interesting. What I'm going to do is front. And you see that. But when you front, as soon as you spread yourself to one side of the floor, it is a long right. way to that other pin. Good pass by Champlin. Right there. He got us off touch. That's what he needs but not enough. That was a really, really good block touch there in the middle by Guillermo Vaz, six foot seven junior out of Rio de Janeiro. He's wearing number 21 in black for Hawaii. Hawaii 29 and two on the year. They were nine and one co-champions with Long Beach State in the Big West Conference, UCLA at 30 and two. They won the MPSF for the first time since 2006 behind National Coach of the Year, John Sparrow. I haven't mentioned that Jakob Tella was the AVCA National Player of the Year. And Ido David, another ace for UCLA. So who's dialing up the service pressure in this second set? Thus far, it's the Bruins. Who has the lead? The Bruins by three. UCLA coming into this championship match, 212 aces on the year to only 110 for their opponents. They were number three in the nation in aces per set. Largest lead of the second so far for the Bruins.
turnover by Galloway. Another opportunity, and that's going to be a net violation break for Hawaii. Missed opportunity for UCLA. That ball's definitely passed too tight. If you're Andrew Rowan, the thought process is, should I dump it here? Everybody thinks I'm going to dump it, throw it outside. I like him setting it in that situation. I think a lot of setters would go for the dump and get stuffed. And right in front of him was Guillermo Voss. David again got a touch off the Hawaii block. And side out and score for David. What impressed me with David on Thursday night were the number of smart swings he took. I mean, the numbers were great, fine. There were three or four balls where he adjusted to a tough situation, took a smart swing, either putting some flat spin on it or hitting it off the edge of the block. There, another smart swing, not an over-the-top swing. The ball was a little bit lower than prime, and he put it flat to the rear corner. You mentioned the semifinal, the three sets to none win over Long Beach State. He was 17 of 24 with just two hitting errors. Yeah, you generally don't get those numbers without some good choices. It's not, it can't be all power. And he, according to John Sparrow, was really under the weather. That's what you were talking about. <laughs> what was that? It was, it was the Norwegian backhanded waffle flipper. Yeah, this, this was inside out the movie way back in the day. Here you go. I think that won, <laughs> didn't it? Wasn't that the winning set? I used to play a little ball back in Milwaukee, Paul. <laughs> Jakob Tella, I think, well, we'll have the discussion. Here is Thim, and goes for him off speed. Perfect pass. <laughs> McHenry unloading on the, the slick, the slow quick. Watch this. This is a drift route. Watch McHenry's takeoff point here. He's going to take off and drift a little bit to his left. A lot of that would normally be straight ahead near the center, but they are doing drift routes. They'll jump at one point, jump out, jump at one point, jump back towards the center. Makes it more difficult for the blockers to read, and certainly at the height of McHenry, almost impossible. Look at that pass by Sheward. One on one, and kill from the right side by Buclius. Another good delivery. Jakob Tello, we saw some of his magic. His body of work, the two championships, the National Player of the Year, is he the best setter in college volleyball in the last 20 years, and who would be the challenger to that? Michael Christensen yep. would be the challenger, but you got to take out the results because he wasn't fortunate enough to play with such a talented yep. squad like Hawaii. Nearly a foot fault, very, very close. First back row, quick combination by UCLA. The bit going tonight. Yeah, Jakob Tella is as good as any I have ever seen. Because he's a complete package, right? He's a weapon from the service line. His ability to locate the ball, his ability to feel the game is next level. Watch him. The longer those rallies go, the more likely he is to make a set where nobody or one blocker are up. Rowan matching Teller right now from the service line. UCLA, best blocking no. team in the country. Starting to get some work. That's you can't a, do that. Yeah, back row attack. Sheward. It was Sheward set the ball from inside the three-meter line. We'll step aside. We've come to the media timeout. The Bruins up one set to none and leading by four in the second. Second set, UCLA up 1-0 and a four-point lead, largest of the match for either side. And it comes on this last play, a technical play. Swing by Chaz Galloway, a block, and a quick bang-bang play. Brett Stewart sets it with two hands, sets it overhand. You can't then attack the ball above the level of the net. So the moment that swing gets taken, that is a point for the Bruins. Had he bump set it, right. no problem. Had you set it over, no problem. But you can't attack above the level of the net. And Sheward was yelling at Jakob Tella, no, don't don't hit it. He knew immediately, by, just by the mechanics, that Tella was going to take a rip. We had one of those on Thursday, too, which yeah. is kind of weird. You don't see that that often. It's not a common call. Players do a good job of interpreting those situations. Galloway is roofed by David. I don't think he can do the positioning better than Ido David just did there. Got his feet to the ball and pressed over. Watch how far over he is. Oh, he's actually, you know what? He's, he's kind of fading out there. I take it back. I thought he was there from our angle. The first block of the match for UCLA. Here is Rowan. And the first swing offensively for Tella, who averages just about six tenths of a kill per set. He's a really, really available and potent weapon 
making it six hitters on the floor for Hawaii, make it five. <laughs> All right, the prescription for Hawaii here is obviously you have to keep siding out, but you're getting to the danger zone of this second set. You have to serve in, so you start serving your spots, and you have to be winning first ball transition for a kill, for a point. Tight pass, shove. Opportunity for the Bruins to David, and he missed it out of bounds. Looking. That ball looked like it was touched in the back row to me. I agree with the Bruins here. I think it touched someone on that flat shot from David. That was not a good set to the right side. We're gonna have our second challenge of the match. Hawaii challenged a net violation, and that challenge was upheld. You start the match with two challenges, and as long as you are correct, you have an unlimited number. It's a really good rule change from when they first instituted the challenge system when you had three, but once you used it, it was done. Well, UCLA, is making the case that number 23, Spiros Hakas, touched this ball. On his head, perhaps. I I didn't. I thought it might have gotten somebody in the back row from our angle, but that's not even close. No. No. That didn't touch anything. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Barney. The barn eye strikes again. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> in live action, it was terrible. I think there is, <laughs> there is no touch. So if it is determined, it was called out of bounds. And if the call stands, then UCLA will only have one challenge remaining unless we go to a fifth set when each team gets an additional challenge. But if you have two, you don't get three. You just have as, as many as two into the fifth set. 53rd Men's NCAA Championship. UCLA has won more than any other program in history with 19. They won six out of the first seven. They won 12 out of the first 14. Al Skates, 50 years on the sidelines for UCLA, retired in 2012. UCLA has not won a national championship since 2006, which for Bruins in men's volleyball, the Bruins in men's volleyball, is an absolute lifetime. They're aware of it, and of course, their coach, John Spira, a very distinguished alumna, alumni, won a championship as an undersized middle blocker, and was he ever, hey, uh, that call will stand. A six foot two middle blocker, John Spira, won a national championship, also won a national championship as an assistant coach for Al Skates and want to send the best out to the other, our best to the other wizard of Westwood, Al Skates. Al, the greatest of all time. And I know you're enjoying this match. I hope you are. So far, so good for your Bruins. Oh, no, he's definitely watching this match. 17 13. Kana back to serve. He had an ace in the opening set. Boy, UCLA is passing the ball very well. Side out numbers before that particular reception. UCLA siding out at 72%. Hawaii at 62%. That is a big, big advantage for the Bruins. 70 plus percent generally wins you sets and wins you matches. Now, you're really putting Hawaii to a choice here. Do you do, as I said, serve the ball in, but the Bruins are passing exceptionally well, which puts you at a huge disadvantage. Or do you just crank it up and go for broke down five as UCLA nears 20? Coleman McDonough, nice block. Second block of the set. Alex Knight got that one. Coleman McDonough, 5'11", freshman out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on as a serving specialist. Uh, this is awareness here. Look at how far Knight is tucked in there. That is well done. Cheating all the way over to the setter, knowing that Tele is a weapon and likes to swing, feeling comfortable that they can get back to the D if necessary. That is a, a really nice recognition by the Bruin block. UCLA leading 19-13 timeout called by Hawaii. You got to love this rivalry. Here's tomorrow's Sunday night baseball matchup, the series finale between the Dodgers and the Padres at Petco Park, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. With baseball tonight, a Sunday night countdown. Back with Kevin Barnett. I'm Paul Sunderland. We are at Eagle Bank Arena in Fairfax, Virginia, on the beautiful wooded campus. We drove around a little bit. We've been, we've been busy the last 72 hours coming to practices and whatnot. And this is a beautiful, beautiful campus and university, George Mason University. Paul, we addressed briefly the UCLA block position on that last play. And I love when a team takes a chance. I love when they push in. Watch now, your number 12, 
He stays way over to his right-hand side in front of Tella. He's past the halfway mark. If this were inside Pauley Pavilion, he'd be inside the circle. He's daring Hawaii to set overhead to Mucleus. It's not going to be that hard of, or that quick of an attack. So watch and see this time if they execute the same thing. If he tucks right in next to Merrick McHenry, number 13 there. He's talking to him. I'll bet he stays in pretty tight once again. And McDonough once again, and misses that one into the top of the tape. So number 23 will head to the sideline. I love it when teams take chances, put pressure on people, and dare someone to set something that the other team thinks isn't as good as some of the other options that are available on the floor. There needs to be more of that. So far, the Bruins have done an exceptional job against the serving talent of Jakob Tella. But now is the time for the National Player of the Year. There you go. Right on cue. Tella had a tremendous serving performance back in March when the Rainbow Warriors beat the Bruins in Honolulu. We said that he's maybe as good as Micah Christensen once was. Micah said about this moment, this is my moment. I control the whole thing. It's the only closed chain skill in the whole game. It's the only time you initiate and conclude the action. You gotta convert this right now. Mucleus. Good touch by the Bruins, but that ball's going to fall. When you talked about Micah, of course I knew you were alluding to Christensen, but I thought you were going to go with another left-handed server, Micah Hancock. Probably the best server in the history of women's volleyball, college, professional, or otherwise. Yes, the most lethal of lethal lefty servers. Timeout now is called by UCLA. After leading by six, they've cut that in half. Charlie Wade, very composed here, and why not? He's got a tremendous lineup in the last two years, Barney. His team has swept BYU in Columbus. We were, of course, there for that one as well, and then last year swept Long Beach State. This is a wonderful group. Right, but when you say group, it's the group from last year that's here this yes, year. Yes, yes. Two years ago, it was a completely different group. Pat Gaspin in the middle there, a totally different com composition of that team. Remember, Radov Panapunov, Rado Panapunov was playing opposite the Bulgarian, and then last year it was basically this group we're seeing now putting their stamp on a brand of Hawaii volleyball to come up with the championship victory. And what I was surprised to see was a three-set victory. It was an extremely impressive performance from Hawaii. And they have answered any possible critics of, was that that victory, the way that victory was had, how easily that was had a fluke? No, they have dominated this season. Last year against Long Beach State, 25-22, 25-21, 25-20 at Pauley Pavilion. Second championship for Charlie Wade. Told us a great story about how he began his career at Hawaii. He was a, a limited earnings coach, sleeping on the couch of Hall of Famer. Dave Shoji, the coach of the women's team. He went there and slept on a couch, got paid $8,000 for four months, and stayed for 11 years. I hope he got a raise somewhere along the way. <laughs> it was a rough decade, Paul. <laughs> it's all paid off. Well, and then he went on to coach at the University of the Pacific and then back to Hawaii and now has led this team to two straight national championships. Hawaii on a 4 nothing run with Jakob Tella. John Sparrow's biggest concern for Hawaii still at the line and missed that one, but he did work. He keyed a 4 nothing run. I know it's a three-point advantage, but it was six when he went back to the service line. Hey, that's all right. You did some work. Look, 20 to 17, you're in a good spot. I'm, I'm good with where Hawaii's at right now. Steady side out. You're in. You have your setter in the back row. You're going to have three hitters for three rotations here. Score two per rotation. You're right back at it at 22. David working on another big match. Back-to-back -back service errors. One of the numbers, Barney, that I'm sure Charlie Wade and the Hawaii players will look at, they're hitting 188 here in the second set. I'm not going to look at it right now. I don't care. I'm about the next swing. OK, that's 200 <laughs> points. That's 200 points below their season ah, average. You got to be like a cornerback, man. Set me. Credit to the Bruins block and defense. David again now with a dozen kills on 22 swings. So David earlier brought back that line swing, right? He turned it inside out. He hit it with pace and depth to the line. This time he hits cross court, but he doesn't bring the ball down. He hits it high into that angle and catches the middle blocker and gets that ball to go well out of bounds. 
Both outside hitters. Knight, 7 of 15, having a nice match. Champlin, 4 of 8. No errors for the outside attackers of UCLA. And another ace. What was going to matter in this second set, right? Ball you wanted to know? Serving. And UCLA has been the team winning that battle. Timeout called by Hawaii. The Bruins led by eight. Hawaii worked their way into that. But now with a timeout, the Bruins on top, 22 to 18. Coming up tonight on ABC, we'll have the Western Conference semifinals game three between the Warriors and the Lakers with a series tied at one game apiece. The countdown crew tips off our pregame coverage at 8 Eastern time. For UCLA, is it time for number 20? The wait has been long and very, very painful. They have had a number of very close calls, particularly in the last several years starting in 2016 against Ohio State in the semifinals. Again, still looking for number 20. They lose in the semis to eventual national champions from Ohio State, 18-16 in the fifth. Then they lose to Long Beach State in the finals, also in the fifth set after they led big in the fourth. And then last year, there it is, trying to get to 20. And then last year, they lost in the semis in 2022, 16-14 in the fifth set. Last year hurt for the players, up 2-0, couldn't close it out, losing that way. Johnson, he doesn't think about that one. He thinks about the one in 2018 where there are matches you could have won. In my opinion, UCLA should have won that match. And kudos to Long Beach State for what they did to come back. But when you're up three or four over 20 and you're up 2-1, you're about to go on to the national title, you got to close that one out. Cooper Robinson checks in for UCLA. He's coming in to do a little extra blocking in the front row. An exceptional outside hitter out of Southern California. Robinson wearing number 11 in blue. Six foot seven redshirt freshman out of Pacific Palisades. Demetrius Mucleus, UCLA has done a really good job on him so far. I'll give you his numbers. And that serve is missed by Knight, but UCLA still with some separation at 22-19. Mucleus is just seven of 20 with three errors, hitting 250 way way below his season average. It's a remarkable 395 with all the tough swings number 11 in black takes on the season. Here comes a float serve from Boss. He's missed a couple times. Got to go straight ahead. Remember Champlain John's, at 11 feet. John Spara said that we asked him about matchups, and usually that means hitters blockers, but he was thinking more about matching up against servers. Oh, what a block by Hoagland again. Already seen a couple of big blocks from Hogan. I think teams underestimate him because he is a little undersized. But look how high he gets up. <laughs> I mean, he is way up and over the net as well. Nice blocking form from number seven. Has dual citizenship with Japan and will play in the J League next year. Back to McHenry, another good block touch. UCLA got to have it. Nucleus inside the block and down. Hey, look who's back in the gym. The two-time champs have returned. This is what they do, right? Generate a little bit of a decent opportunity, and then you come back and convert first ball transition point scoring opportunity. This is what Dimitri Nucleus has added to his capability is that cross-court shot. The ability to go inside even a three-man block is something he did not have a couple of years ago. Charlie Wade, so complimentary of the work that Dimi has done in the weight room. And you may say, that dude is skinny. Yeah, but that dude is strong, and that dude is ripped. I talked to Demi before Big West. I said, is, is this what your dad looked like at this age? Is this just what you guys are? He goes, yeah, absolutely. He goes, my dad's a little heavier right now. But this is absolutely my genetics. He said, it's just the way I am. But he has gotten a lot stronger over his college career and shows on a swing like that. Hawaii on a 3 nothing run. And when you go back to the service turn of Jakob Tella, an 8-3 run to get Hawaii back within one at 22-21. Thanks for joining us here on ESPN, the 53rd Men's NCAA Volleyball Championship. Hawaii at 29 and two, taking on UCLA at 30 and two. It went chalk, the number one seed UCLA taking on Hawaii, the number two seed UCLA. Fought off two set points to win the opening set, 28 to 26. Ido David has been the offensive star so far for UCLA. 
12 kills on 22 swings. But when you look at Gooch, Knight, and Champlin, what they're doing in reception is leading the way for UCLA. A big advantage in side out efficiency. And they've only given up one ace in each of the first two sets here. Gooch, as mentioned, one on one in between Champlin, number 20 in blue, with a swing. Andrew Rowan did a next level thing here for a freshman. Uh, even at the center position, that ball was passed. He took a real good look at the Hawaii side before he set that ball. He is as impressive a freshman at the setting position as I can ever remember seeing. Some equals, but he is right there with the best of them. Smart play. Big time play, push into the block and out of bounds. All right, Hawaii's well, going to have to prove they can be as effective with Nucleus out of the back row. Either in point scoring or inside out if they lose this particular play here. Nucleus now back over 300 with a couple of back-to-back -back kills, 9 of 22. The lead is one. Off speed, pretty good first touch. David out of the back row but out of bounds and we're tied. Smart serving. Putting your opponent off balance without having to bury it. Ethan Champlin with a good move, but that is a difficult pass key by Demetrius Mukulis. I'd cut it again a little further. I'd cut it in front of the libero. The lead was 19-13. Both teams are out of timeouts. Block touch by Tella. That's all good. Tella with another block touch. You, Maximus, are you not entertained? That was next level. Yeah, put that the one on the The dig by Gooch, though. the dig by Knight, the scrappy play, never to be outdone. Hawaii, just an absolute wonderful response. Boy, their backs were completely against the wall. Down one set to none, down 19-13. Now they have a set point. Remarkable turnaround. Ball was set too low, chance for UCLA. David misplayed it. What a swing. What a swing. You're breaking my arm. Oh, <laughs> and man. you're breaking my neck. <laughs> Coming overhead from an off setter, and you put it to the corner with crisp contact. Ethan Champlin, who'd been soft touched about five times in a row, you cannot do it better than that. In that moment for the set. Tied at 24. Magnificent play by both teams in the second half of this second stanza. Yeah, how about the dig off the turn oh. by Tella? And how many balls did Jakob Tella soft touch when he was blocking at the net for Hawaii? We told you you got the two best teams. The last few points, proved it. Ketrazinski, Cole Tet Ketrazinski up front to block. Somebody on the Bruins side touched that ball in Tella's hands, but it still didn't matter. What a delivery by the National Player of the Year, number 10 in black. Uh, interestingly here, they're going to leave Cole in the match. Second set point for the Rainbow Warriors, and I do mean Warriors. As Galloway tried to cut that one off in front of the Bruin defenders and missed it short. Just the fifth service error for Hawaii. Now I think UCLA here, Paul, I think they might be out of subs. 
But remember, they used McDonough as a serving sub, so they well could be. Gooch with another dig. Nucleus inside the block and down. Yeah, six subs in men's college volleyball, unlike the women's game where there are 15. So I think you're right, Kevin. Yeah. Good call. I think John Spira rolled the dice and is out of substitutions. Yeah, so he has trapped his, to this point, leading offensive attacker on the bench to end this second set. And Mukleus getting hot again just when Hawaii needed it. Hoagland has been superb. A couple of big stuff blocks, really holding his own. Good pass by Knight. Okay, Alex Knight is having a whale of a match. Eight kills on 17 swings, no errors. Defending, passing, serving, and blocking. Yeah, and I think 90% of players take that ball into the angle, get soft touched again. He turned that ball down the line. That is excellent recognition by Knight. And guess what? We're, we're over time again. Why not? Why not? Tied at 26. And Norris misses out of bounds. That toss was too low. Fourth set point. Nope, he's back. We had this. <laughs> we don't have a count of the subs over no, here. I'll tell we, you that right now. Unless we, we keep not. track by hand, it's not in the stats, thank you, as to how many subs have been used. Well, maybe David, who was really under the weather on Thursday night, just needed a little bit of a blow. That is, they're out of subs now. We're being told officially at the scorer's table. Out of the middle to McHenry, number 13. And the Bruins get past the serving rotation of Jakob Tella. Remember, he's the one that keyed the comeback for Hawaii. And I love that both teams are not afraid to use all of their weapons at a key moment like this. It shows you where they are offensively in their confidence and their ability to run their offense. Both have had middles, have huge kills here. Hoagland on one side, and that time, Merrick. Nucleus. In row one, that is a bad dig. That is not a bad dig. Got to keep the ball on your side. And that ball off the block and out of bounds. Voss, Jakob Tele, after 19-13, has taken his team to a completely different level in a couple of phases. Oh, man, you love this. If you're a volleyball fan, you love this. If you're in this match, you love the level that this is being played at. Fifth set point now for Spiros Hakas. Look at that pass. And the ball falls. What a brilliant reception by number 12, Knight, on a rocket down the line from Hawaii. Uh, just how large is the wingspan of Merrick McHenry? Uh, large enough. <laughs> that, is, that is quite the reach with the left hand. McHenry now with seven kills on 11 swings. Tied again. Missed out of bounds. Mukleus missed it. He'd had three kills in a row after a tough start. Now set point number one for UCLA. Hawaii has had five. And a lot of times when it reverses like this, it ends now. Yep. For a lot of teams, this is what happens. Galloway on the left. Guillerme Voss in the middle. Mukleus on the right side. These are two really good and really brave setters. Hey, this is the rumble in the jungle right here. This is two heavyweight fighters ready to go as many rounds as need be. We could see the equivalent of five sets in far less than five sets. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I never predict how many sets. I just want it like this, very close. David, man, has he got a heavy arm. Look at the choice by Rowan. Fake the back quick to free up, free up David. And I, and I love the pace, too. What a delivery from Rowan. We've seen a lot of them. Look at the contact, the way he just flicks it back over the top of his head. That's very difficult for Galloway. Overloaded, does he help on the back quick, or does he get outside to that fast D? Set point number two now for McHenry. Wicked serve. And Galloway is able to slam dunk that ball from about 11 feet, 8 inches down inside the Bruin block. Break for Hawaii. Chaz Galloway, I think he jumps about 45. 
in all in all reality. An absolute high flyer. Had a really nice conversation with Chaz Galloway yesterday, 6'3 junior out of San Diego. Very, very talented, bright young man. Yeah, great family too. You know, he uh, he's not the only high flyer in the family. His sister flies helicopters for the Air Force. <laughs> but what's her vertical? <laughs> About 30,000 feet. Champlin is stuffed. Block number four for Hawaii. And it's Hoagland again, yes. Combination right hand of Hoagland, left of Tele. Set point number seven. Fantastic pass by Gooch. Just a fantastic pass under pressure. I mean, volleyball, you're welcome right now with these two teams. My goodness. Seven set points saved by the Bruins. Back row quick combination. Look at this passing. I mean, these, these players are serving rockets at one another. And guys are just, just grooving the ball right on target. In system. Set point 32-31. Set point number eight. UCLA passing with four. I'd serve straight ahead. Champlin off the top. Galloway. Hawaii for the set. Down 19-13. Hawaii, the two-time defending champs, got off the deck, led by the National Player of the Year, Jakob Tele. 33-31, we're tied at a set apiece. Both the first opening two sets in overtime and for Hawaii down 19-13, came storming back. Eight set points, UCLA fought off and finally Hawaii wins it back with Kevin Barnett. We were talking during the commercial, that is one of the best sets of college volleyball I have ever seen. Oh, that's the best set I've ever seen in a final. That that set was next level from play. Forget the fact that it's a deuce set, right? It's overtime, all the saves. The level of play in the middle, on the outside, the digs. Oh, you could make a highlight reel oh, just out of the last I mean, 15 points. That's the best set of volleyball I've seen in probably 10 years at any level, and the circumstances make it so much bigger. Now, heading into what now is a best of three, right? 1-1. One, one. I don't think anyone has momentum. Yes, Hawaii wins that, but if you look at Chaz Galloway, his teammates came rushing out to the floor after that play, and his look was one of exhaustion. He's in the middle of a, of a heavyweight f title fight here, and no one has the advantage. We are set 0-0 for best of three right now. Yeah, but what's got to be going through UCLA's mind up 19-13? And look, they you let... You I know you can't, right. but it's human beings. It's young athletes. They were up 19-13. They know they should have won that set. But give all credit to Hawaii. And Jakob Tella got it started. And then they start the third set with a block on the outside with Voss and Mukulius. Yeah, Tella lit the fuse, right? But it's Mukulius who hit, put away a couple of key balls. It's a couple of big blocks. It's Cole Hoagland yes. with a number of good moves as well as offensive side outs. That was a total team effort to come back in that second set. The digs and the choices yep. by Jakob Tella. And missed that one out of bounds. Just underway here in the third set, if you're just joining us. <laughs> There'll be more. There'll be more. Trust me. 28-26, UCLA, 33-31, Hawaii in the second. Ido David, the leading scorer in the championship so far with 13 kills to go along with five digs and a block. And that ball is served out of bounds. Spiros Hakas, last year the most outstanding player in the championship match. Won Hawaii, beat fellow member of the Big West three sets to none at Pauley Pavilion. David, 
smashing down the line. Yeah, he's dialed that line in. I like the pace, I like the location, both outside of the block, down the line, but also within about three foot of the end of the net, or the end of the court with a ton of heat. Only a sophomore at six foot seven out of Israel. Alex Knight is having a superb match. We talked, and he made one of the, the best digs so far of the night to keep the ball off the floor on a rip by Mucleus. He's eight of 17, hitting 471. Got two service aces to go along with three digs and a block. Galloway basically by himself. Yeah, another high-flying kill from Galloway. I got an update from folks who are texting me right now. Uh, Cambria Galloway, 30-inch vert on the women's okay, side when okay. she was playing at Air Force. All right, I was curious. Yep. Helicopter pilot, Air Force Academy. Very, very talented and proud family. David again, one-on-one. -on -one. Both setters are doing such a good job. And again, Andrew Rowan, only a freshman out of Tribuco Hills, first team All-American. That's what the other coaches and people on the selection committee thought of this six foot six freshman. Took over the starting setting duties when Miles Partain stepped away from the Bruin team in January. Four freshmen have led their team to a national championship. It's been done before, but it happens very, very rarely. Who's the last one? The last one was Jonathan Winder in 2005, yep. Karch Kirai in 1979, Chip McCaw in 1992, and Ricky Ludes in 1981. So it's just Bruins and Waves who do this sort of thing. Well, the Bruins won 12 out of the first 14 and have 19, so they have done their share. But is it time for 20? That's the big question for UCLA and UCLA volleyball fans. They know the history of this story program dominated the early years of this championship. Rowan will go back to serve, trying to add his name to that very distinguished list. Three of the four players on that list went on to be Olympians. A lot of energy expended at the end of that second yes. set and uh, showing up here early in the third. Kind of a slow start. Coaches hate this, but I think it's almost inevitable. Hawaii really upped their offensive efficiency over about 15 in that overtime set. They were siding out at 62%. They finished the set at 71. Hoagland again. Yeah. Just tucked inside Hoagland. And we said they don't get rattled, right? Hawaii doesn't get rattled. You can put pressure on them. You can score points on them. But they're not just going to kind of wilt away. And they showed that in that set. It was kind of make or break time. So they need a couple of points here. They need a couple of points in the next service rotation. They did exactly that to climb back into that set. That is the mark of a championship squad. They've played like that all year. Hakas off the block and out of bounds. To your point earlier on, Kevin, about don't be too smart by half. Just throw the ball up there and let Hawkins do some work against six hands. Yeah, it frustrates me when teams set fast to a three-man block where everybody knows it's going to be there, right. or a well-formed right. two-man right. block. What are you accomplishing besides disadvantaging your hitter by 30%? That's what you're accomplishing, Terrible. unfortunately. Terrible. But it's an in vogue philosophy that people adhere to with too much rigidity. Hakas, that ball out of bounds into the antenna, an unforced error by number 23. Hakas now eight kills on 19 swings. That is his, make it seven kills on 19 swings. Really struggled the other night. I, I mentioned it briefly, but it's to reiterate on Hakas. He was getting treatment throughout the course of that match on his right calf. But when we spoke to Charlie Wade about it, he said, hey, he looked fantastic in practice today. So I'm very hopeful he'll be at full strength. There is Norris, been good, been good from the service line and good offensively. Back row, quick combination, the big. Brazil started that about now 15 years ago, and it is a very, very difficult play. Farther back than that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know the years are going by for me, too. It's like back in 2000, late 90s. Oh, you're right, you're thing. right, yeah. you're right. Early 2000s, they were really perfecting it into the 04 Olympics where that was kind of peak Brazil. As good as they've been, they'd never been better yeah, than that final. Yeah. Had Ricardinho at the setting position, and they've continued it on with Bruno Rosende. 
Oh, look at that dig. And set. And hit. <laughs> wow. Wow, what a play by UCLA. Yeah, this is just making something out of nothing. Right, you get the dig, Champlin pops it up. I've watched a lot of Champlin here, just the way he moves. You can see that he is a, a student of the game. John Sparrow saying that, watches a ton of tape. He came down and sat next to John Sparrow during UH's semifinal. This is a kid, number 20 in blue, who loves the game. He's a student of the game. He's just a volleyball guy, he loves talking volley. Watch his feet after he passes, and he's getting ready in the back row to hit a bick out of the middle back. You were just mentioning Jiba or Murillo or some of these guys. He moves just like them. Yeah. He chops his feet in the same way. He's mimicking that style. Oh, Champlin lost his footing, maybe in a wet spot. Ball off the top of the tape, change trajectory and speed. Yeah, what happens here, Paul, is you make a move to your left because the ball's moving to your left and it catches the net, and you've already stepped to your left, but you've committed a little bit too far forward. You can't then pull yourself backwards as it pops up onto your face. Akis will go back to the line. Hawaii's been very clean, only five service errors, now to a dozen for UCLA. UCLA has missed more serves than any team in the world. Make, <laughs> trust me, I, I mean that facetiously, but that's, that's how aggressive they are. They missed well over 500 on the year. Over the top of the block by McHenry. I saw Guillermo Voss turn around. He just he just nodded his head because there's no stopping right. that ball. There is no getting a hold of that connection between setter and hitter. Ball ripped into the cross court. Beautiful swing on the outside. Once again, one on one by Galloway. tape and out of bounds I was talking to him last night Keone Thim and he, he set the record for the teams in the final four with the most MPHs from the service line at 76 and and I transposed the numbers and I said man you sure served at 60 70 he said no 76 my brother 76 <laughs> come on get it right I said I had the numbers right just in the wrong order tied at a set apiece Hawaii leading it 10-9 A lot of block touches, transition opportunities for UCLA. That ball off the edge. Back row transition for the Bruins, and we're tied at 10. Yeah, unfortunate for Hawaii. That was a nice blocking move. They responded to a very challenging situation there, too. Look, diving in, they get a good touch, despite it being very crowded in that left side of the court. That most times will work out when you react that way, the way Hawaii did. Most times you end up getting another opportunity. Depth again for UCLA. Guy Guinness started the match, also out of Israel. Six foot five, redshirt sophomore, back on the floor for UCLA, wearing number nine in blue. I thought that J.R. Norris the fourth did a really good job for the Bruins off the bench. Ace, oh, I thought he had it. Challenge card coming. Yeah. Immediately, immediately. I think that ball was in. Now, the bar nine, notoriously bad, but I think that ball might have been it. Well, when I saw it live, you heard my reaction. I was about to rip roar an ace. I thought that ball was in for sure. UCLA only has one challenge, remember? They lost their, they their, lost challenge. their challenge in the second set. Hawaii has both of their challenges. This is the second challenge for UCLA. Hawaii has challenged once. And that's not going to oh take Oh, my long. gosh. Yeah. Wow. That's why we have the system. That ball was in. That ball was in by two feet. Hey, that's no Kansas to Texas, but that ball's in, all right? It was Florida, but who's counting? Florida? My bad, that was Kansas. <laughs> Maybe it was at Kansas. No, it was at Texas. Dang it. <laughs> the all-time worst call in the history of volleyball. It was in by three times that much, yeah, and it was 100%. Yeah. And it might have it determined the outcome of the match. 
Absolutely. It swung the momentum, as I recall. Nucleus finds a, a small little crack in that Bruin wall. But, and, and what he's doing there is he's keeping the ball so high into the hands and hitting it with a ton of topspin. That'll work out to your advantage. When you're able to hit that area of the block, more often than not, you get a positive result or a zero. You almost never get a straight down stuff or a negative. That ball missed out of bounds. That ball served out of bounds. The scoreboard has it at 12 all. I think it's 12 11 UCLA. So there's some confusion here. And it, it's only the score. So I mean, yeah, now that now the scoreboard in the building also is in sync with us at 12 11. Rowan again. Mucleus again, this time against three blockers. No, free ball for the Bruins. And Guinness off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Yeah, John's really working with that roster now. That's just a fortunate bounce for the Bruins. And Guinness, yeah, he wasn't in that much of that last set, bringing kind of a loose vibe. Getting everybody going, a little bit of energy here. Tight third set. UCLA has now come back to lead at 13 to 11, out hitting Hawaii 545 to 364 here in the third. That ball just out of bounds. So close, but there will be no challenge. UCLA now with 16 errors. So ahead of their pace because they, they miss on average 5.2 per set. You talked about Chaz Galloway showing some signs of fatigue, and I mean, that second set and the first set were both incredibly intense. So coming on now for Hawaii, seldom used because Galloway rarely leaves the floor is Philip Homer, six foot seven senior out of the Czech Republic. Humler, excuse me. That ball off the tape and another fortuitous bounce for UCLA leading at 14-12. Galloway's gonna come yeah, right, right back. back in. Wow, okay. Give you Galloway's numbers so far on the late afternoon here in Virginia in the Eastern time zone. It's still very early on, I'm sure, another perfect day in the Hawaiian Islands. Galloway, 7 of 15, hitting 400. Sheward with a perfect pass. Cole Hoagland, he is really, really impressive. And he was in last year's championships as well. You know, a 6'4 middle blocker in today's day and age. Yeah, but he's giving you the complete game here. Look how far outside he is there. That Knight's got to pay attention to that. Knight has two hitters in his zone and didn't track over to either one. Now, he's got the front row setter, but they got to communicate about it. The middle has to push him over so he can pay attention to the back one. Didn't do that. He's still stuck on the setter. Didn't even realize Hoagland was behind him. Akana coming in again to serve. Both Libros have been outstanding, but particularly Troy Gooch. What an important transfer. The six-foot redshirt senior out of Buffalo, New York, transferred from Purdue, Fort Wayne, and he has really solidified UCLA's receiving and defense. Kianito David lead 15-13 in the third. Third set, UCLA on top of Hawaii, 15-13, the top two seeds. 29 and 2 are the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, UCLA champions of the MPSF, the number one overall seed at 30 and 2. Back with two time Olympian Kevin Barnett and Paul Sunderland. Second set, 33 31. So many magnificent plays. If that gets posted to YouTube, or of course it'll be on ESPN, Plus, go back and watch that second set. It was phenomenal in so many ways. Coming out of the timeout. Norris the fourth back on and still doing work from the service line. Smart shot by Hawkes, but the miss. Hawkes a little bit unlucky. What's he trying to do with that ball on the out of system set by Spiros Hawkes? Well, he's trying to get a reset. He's trying to slap it up into the block and get a reset. But that reset has got to be about six to ten feet off the net. If the block manages to push it too far back, you get a bad bounce. That's a tough cover. Hawaii led 9-7 here in the third. UCLA on top now 16-13. UCLA hitting a cool 6-15 here in the third set. Go, go, go. 
Norris playing some defense as well. Good shot by Knight. Exactly what we're talking about. Smart hitting on the outside by both teams. And better blocking by the Bruins. Now I'll tell you why this block goes down, because the coverage of Hawaii had broken down. As you go through a long rally like that, everything gets kind of disorganized. Watch when this ball is contacted. There's nobody anywhere near that attack. Normally you have yeah. a, a cup, a semicircle around the attacker. There's nobody around here. You see that semicircle right there on the previous attack? The next one, nobody. Right. And that's because the rally went so long. Hawaii is challenging a net violation. And, and unlike in international volleyball, at the Olympic Games, you can only challenge the final action unless you press a buzzer to stop play during the during the rally. In college volleyball, you can go back at any point during the rally. I mean, and that was a long, long rally. So they'll go back and look to see ball in or out, net violation, a touch. They can go back and look at the whole thing. And this whole system's a little bit slow in its implementation. They don't show it in the arena. And so it's, it's like a dead area in the game. But part of the reason that it's so slow is sometimes the communication of what's being looked at is difficult to get when you have that opportunity, as you said, Paul, to challenge anything in the rally. Yeah, that's yeah, a net. Net, net violation. That's going to go wise, right? Yeah, that's twice. That's, that's, that's a huge, huge reversal and use of the challenge by Charlie Wade and his outstanding staff. They still have two challenges, John Spraw and UCLA have one challenge remaining unless we go to a fifth set. UCLA won the opener 28-26. Hawaii won the second 33-31. It took them eight set points to get there after trailing by as many as seven. Make it 16 to 10, excuse me. And 19-13. David, the pace of that bit, uh, that quick behind is really good to number 16 in blue. David now leading all attackers in the match with 17 kills on 30 swings. UCLA back on top by three, hit 562 in the set. Oh, that's got to be a misplay, Mis miscontact. A very rare ball handling mistake. Tough chance for Jakob Tella that time. He was trying to paddle up that Norwegian waffle again like he did in the opening set, but uh, unable to get away with that. And Hawaii, Hawaii calls timeout with the Bruins now leading 18-14. Next stop on the F1 schedule is the second annual Crypto.com Miami Grand Prix at the Miami International Autodrome at the Hard Rock Stadium. Max Verstappen is the defending champ and leads the season's driver standings. Our coverage begins at 2, excuse me, tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific with Grand Prix Sunday and the race starts at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus. Barney, aren't yeah. you taking your family to a Formula One race this summer? Yeah, we'll be at the Red Bull Ring coming up at the end of June. Where is that? That is in Austria and okay. we'll be there in a motorhome for okay. four days camping at the track. I will be wearing jorts, low pumas, and a Max Verstappen <laughs> t-shirt, <laughs> along with a whole plethora of orange smoke bombs. So it's a full send this year. Well, I, I, am, I am very familiar with Verstappen, as he is my brother-in-law in Sweden's favorite driver. Nito David, again, struggling with a virus on Thursday night, but still had a very, very big match, led UCLA. 17 kills on 24 swings tonight. A big load, 18 kills, but getting a lot of help now, particularly from Alex Knight and the other outside hitter, Ethan Champlin, are having really, really efficient matches. I'll give you their numbers combined, the both left-siders. Stabbed by Sheward. Oh, Mucleus, the only time he hits on the left side in row one. 
Opposites in the left front, setters in the right back. Yeah, he told me he spent a lot of time with his dad working on this recoil, this open and then close on the ball. Watch, watch how much torque he puts on the body here. Pulling the arm, pulling the abs, generating a lot of momentum from the core of his body. It's impressive mechanics. Smart shot for recycle. And down the line. Got an update on the challenge. Start with three. So UCLA has two remaining. Hawaii has all three of theirs. And getting into the final set, you get an additional one in the fifth set if that does come to pass. But you'll have no more than three. All right. Real familiar situation for uh, UCLA here, isn't it? Pretty sizable lead, four points, feeling pretty good. You have to close this set out. If you see UCLA and you give this one back, I think you're going down in flames in the fourth. 19-13 was the advantage yeah. of the second set. Yeah, but you've done almost as much work there. Yeah. Galloway, one-on-one, -on -one a block by Rowan. That's how you close the antenna. This ball is going to be a little bit outside. And Rowan all the way to the antenna, reaching over just in time. He's maybe even a touch late there, reaching through the net. Rowan with a stuff block for UCLA now on top 2015. And the fourth block, timeout called by Hawaii. You got to love this rivalry. Here's tomorrow's Sunday night baseball matchup, the series finale between the Dodgers and the Padres at Petco Park, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Boy, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to go back on ESPN Plus and watch that second set again. That Everyone was should. absolutely a classic. Won by Hawaii, 33 to 31. But can they mount a comeback once again? I, I've been trying to think if I've seen a better set in a championship final in the sport of volleyball. Men's or women's? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not one that was better played. Mm. I've seen a lot with terrific emotion. I've seen a lot with big stakes that mattered in determining the title but not one that was played at that level for that long. Something special. So many, so many sports center quality plays during the course, particularly over 20. That just, I mean, when we got to 20, we didn't know we were going to 33-31. John Spira, three national championships when he was the head coach at University of California, Irvine, 2007. 2009, 2012, also the Olympic team coach won a bronze medal in Rio. Hawaii must convert. Voss, I thought so. Do you see McHenry bail to the other side to Mucleus? Let's check Tele. Tele gave a long stare at the block, check back again, and then got that one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's good recognition again from Tele, understanding where everyone is in the game. And this is the three rotations where it has to happen. You have Boston the line now. You're going to get Mucleus next. And you're going to get Hoagland. That ball left way inside. That was a setting mistake, a rare one for Rowan, wearing number seven in blue for the Bruins. And guess what? Here comes Hawaii, and timeout. UCLA. Vintage John Spraw, he loves these early timeouts. He doesn't like to let a roll get going on the other side. You see this internationally with Team USA. He will use his timeouts much earlier, two, three points earlier than most coaches. David was just trying to spatch that ball up into the block and get it recycled, but a much better block, a much better block, and that is their sixth. Hawaii looking for to be the first team in over 40 years to win three in a row. UCLA, <laughs> not surprisingly, did it on three separate occasions. And actually, that team in the early 80s, we mentioned Ricky Ludes, we mentioned Dave Saunders, we mentioned Steve Sammons, among others, and of course, our dear friend, Karch Kirai. They actually won four in a row during that stretch. Well, we were talking to Charlie Wade today, right? And he said he found an old note 
in his desk. Yeah. And it was dated April 11, 2019, and it was from Nico Mucleus, father to Demi, that said, if you get these three players, you will win three straight national titles. Two are done, one TBD. That was on April 11th, yep. 2019. Had an interesting conversation with Coach Wade, you know, the international influence on his team. He says, look, I'm battling with Stanford, UCLA, USC for all of the top recruits. And UCLA, year in, year out, has the number one recruiting class. If I have to recruit a player to compete against the likes of UCLA and they have a foreign passport, I'm going to go get them because they're good enough. <laughs> and they have been good enough the last couple of years. Night again. Boy, he has been really, really solid playing above his season averages. Night now with... 11 kills on 26 swings. That's a lot of activity for Knight. Well, Charlie Wade described UCLA as an incredible collection of talent. He said, listen, we offered every guy over there, and UCLA won those battles. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, why, I gotta, yeah. that's why I gotta get on the plane. Perfect pass. Tough chance for Galloway. Not much of an approach. Did the best he could. Hoagland, I thought so. Good block touch. And the ball goes down. Norton, along with Rowan, doing a really nice job getting a touch, but the Bruins couldn't continue the play. 21-18. For UCLA, you talked about disappointment in that second set. You shouldn't be surprised. You're playing a, a quality yeah. team. You're playing the two-time defending reigning champions. You can't be surprised. You'd be disappointed, not surprised. Same thing here. You can't get disappointed again. Don't let him come back. As a reminder, the Bruins led 19-13. A really good block. Hoagland again. Remember in that second set, Tele led the way from the service line, but the number of block touches that he got against the Bruins. Well, and it's he and Hoagland once again on that right side and the, and the same matchup. They're taking on Ethan. And they're getting him. I think you need to go to the opposite here. I think you need to go to David under almost any circumstances. Chuck the ball over there to your guy who's leading an offense with 19 kills, hitting 353. Timeout called by UCLA. So those are two pretty quick timeouts. UCLA's lead is now just 21 to 19, a 4 1 run for Hawaii. A lot of responsibility, a lot of pressure on the shoulders of young Andrew Rowan trying to become the fifth freshman ever to lead a team to a national championship in his first season. Mentioned that we took a very, very nice tour of the beautiful capital of this great country yesterday, and every state has someone very special to represent them in the capital. King Kamehameha, who was the first to unite the islands of Hawaii, and the Gipper, Ronald Reagan, there for the statue representing California. So California, the Gipper against the King. And one of the really interesting things about that statue in particular is that it has a strip of the Berlin Wall. Oh, fantastic, underneath yes. Underneath it in the base, yes. signifying the time when the Berlin Wall fell during the Reagan administration. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. They begged President Reagan to take it out of his speech. He wouldn't do it. Well, we'll see if Hawaii can do it again. There here. you go. We'll see if they can come back. Hey, they're you, two away. UCLA, both teams out of timeouts. 21-19, Mucleus on the year, 35 aces. Good play by Norris, go to him. What a fantastic play by J.R. Norris, the fourth. Yeah, this is next level stuff from a middle blocker. The recognition, the calmness of the platform, and then right into his approach. That is an outside hitter type move to the middle. He's seven of eight with yeah. no errors. Yeah, and Jared did not start this match. Right, the depth of UCLA. Ace serve for Rowan. Said he wanted to be a Bruin since he was 12 years old. He's living his dream and performing at a big moment here. Used to be an outside hitter at points in high school. Oh, also has that big arm. He's got a wonderful arm. Yep, a whip. Came to UCLA in spite of the fact that he knew that he was going to not only have to battle, but probably play behind the reigning 
Conference Player of the Year in Miles Partain. Rowan again, and missed that one out of bounds. But at 23-19, not a very expensive miss, and just the young man just laughing that one off. John Spira said, I recruited him even though we had Miles. He was just too good, just so good not to recruit very heavily, and it worked out. Three hitters back in the front row for the Bruins. Good rotation. Back to Norris again. Eight for nine. And he gave you wrist away last time. That was a hard cross body pushing UCLA to set point. J.R. Norris played very sparingly his first four years with the Bruins. Splitting time earlier in the year with Guy Guinness, but what a job he's doing in this championship match. Set point number one. Inside the block by Hawkins. One set point saved, but still comfortable three point separation for the Bruins. Hawkins now with nine kills. Right side, David. You said it, Kevin. UCLA closes it out quickly. They trailed 9-7, but then went on a really solid run. And over 18, UCLA was absolutely superb. They went at 25-21. Light work and a definitive finish from the big man on the right. UCLA 2-1. UCLA Bruins on top of the two-time defending champions, the Rainbow Warriors from Hawaii. Is it finally time for number 20? You look at the match summary, UCLA leading in the offensive category and in terms of kills and doing a very nice job siding out. Kevin sided out at 81% in right. that third set, 81%. And we said it's 70% win sets, right? Well. Yes, you cited out 70%. Hawaii, yep. but you can't give up 80% to your opponent then. That was the big one there, the kills. 15 of them for UCLA in that set. Hawaii now in a must-win situ situation. Remember, no team in 40 years has won three in a row. Hawaii has won the last two, one in Columbus in 2021 over BYU, three sets to none, and last year at UCLA over Long Beach State, also three sets to none. How good has Norris the fourth been? Almost a perfect night in attack. Eight of nine, no errors, and served very well. Good service pressure for the middle blocker. Mucleus with a kill off of Champlin. Give you. Demi Muclius's numbers now 15 kills on 36 swings. Hit just over 330 now and on the year hit 395. Uh, this is kind of unknown territory for Hawaii. They have only gone five one time this year and that was back on yep. Thursday. Yep. They don't have a yep. lot of experience being in these fifth sets. Or having to go to a fifth set as we sit here in the fourth. You've even got to get there first. David again. They are running that right side in the front court and the back court at hyper speed. Yeah, fast and heavy is how you would describe that particular attack. He's dialed up that line after two early misses. I don't. He has not missed another one wide right or long on that right side. Will certainly be a candidate for the most outstanding player in the tournament should UCLA go on to win now with 21 kills after a big night on Thursday, even when he was under under the weather. That ball rocketed that time by high flying Chaz Galloway. Yeah, nice tempo again on the big. I actually had uh, Jason Ring checking in, one time UH star back in the late 90s, a national team member. He said the big was executed in 96 by, in the NCAA finals by UCLA and Hawaii, by Hawaii at UCLA. But uh, I don't know about that. 
I want to consult the tape. J ring. Hawaii saying no touch. We might have a challenge, depending. Oh, what a dig by Sheward. There it is again. There will be no challenge, and Spiros Hakas. Spiro, Spiros is very spirited, one of the real vocal leaders on this team. I tell Jay Ring, I don't care when it started. UCLA and Hawaii are able to use it now. It is an integral part of yeah. most every college offense, but Hawaii is executing it top shelf in this match. Knight again with a very good pass. UCLA comes right back. Ethan Champlin, number 20. Look at the outsides. Alex Knight, 12 kills on 28 swings, one error. Champlin, six kills on 19 swings. A little quieter, make it seven kills now on 20. But boy, have they been good in reception, as, and so has Troy Gooch. Both teams, with the level of serving, the speed of serving, the location, they are really good in, in reception. Had to fight that one off. And Nucleus, that was not a good swing into the middle of the net. Nucleus has a year left of eligibility, but he has decided that he is going to move on to the professional ranks. Back quick to Guillerme Voss. Switch in the jump serve. McHenry. Yeah, you could see that coming. Yeah, we haven't seen him in a little while. It looks no different than it did earlier in this match. Extremely high point of attack and a slow one in the middle. This is a kid who's going to make an impact on the national team at that position. He's still learning how to play middle defensively in particular when it comes to lateral movement and responding to different uh, attack formations across from him by the offense. Something special. Led the nation in hitting efficiency at a gaudy 527, also number nine blocker in the country. One of nine first team All-Americans in this championship match. It might be reminding a lot of people if you just tuned in, you were back in 18, you were watching Dane and Jimma. Very similar yeah. in the, the pace of that attack in the middle. In fact, McHenry might even be just a touch slower, but both guys hitting the ball up around 12 feet. And that ball missed out of bounds, so UCLA now on top. Just to review what a night it has been so far. Opening set, overtime to UCLA 28-26. Second set, quadruple overtime. <laughs> One of the best sets I've ever seen, we've ever seen. 33-31 to Hawaii, and then a really, really solid performance, particularly after trailing early. Andrew Rowan and the Bruins trailed 9-7. They went on to win that third set, 25-21. The Hawaii fans hate that one. Pancake by Rowan, but what a set by the middle blocker. Well, that, Paul, that's sort of a weird meal right there. That's a <laughs> pancake to a deep dish pizza. <laughs> it, was, it was oh, that an was, odd mix. Man, that was a Geno's East right there from J.R. Norris. We're going to have a challenge of that ball being up or down on the defensive play by Rowan. And why, with all three of their challenges, I misspoke earlier. And yes, whether or not it's up or down, UCLA with two challenges remaining. UCLA, if it, the call stands, look at Rowan's left hand. That's close. It could be inside, kind of the thumb. Yeah, any part the of the pointer ball. Pointer finger, right? Any part of the ball. That is really, really close. Now remember, they have the capability to zoom in. In this case, they'll probably have access to uh, our footage, and that ball is down right that there. That ball is down. Yeah, Great work yeah. by our crew. Yeah, yeah, fabulous. To get yeah. that angle and show you, watch this, that is down. That is going to Hawaii's yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Good use of the challenge again. That one, was, that one was an easy one. Some of the earlier ones, look at Rowan, can't believe it. He thought he got it. But that ball, that ball was down. 
pointer finger and half your thumb is not enough. No, no. Tied at six. Hawaii with their full complement of challenges still remaining. Hawkins in transition. Off the top of the block, another score for you. Oh, that. Here comes another we're, challenge. Yeah, we're going to have another challenge. There it goes. I'm sitting 50 feet away, and that was an obvious touch. No touch was called. The first referee called the ball out of bounds and did not get any necessary help from his lines people. You saw it the same way, didn't you, Barney? I don't know. That sounded like a definitive statement from you. The eye of Sunderland might be under review here. I, I got a new prescription at Costco <laughs> not, not, not too long ago, so so I am I am doing really well. I saw the ball change direction. It changed spin. All right, well, it's going to be Champlin who's going to get this or not on the right side with probably his right hand. I don't see anything definitive there. He's slowed down a little bit here. Uh, I, I can't tell there. No, I can't tell there either. Now, they, they have a system that has different frames per second FPS cameras on different corners that they're going to be looking at the referees. So you at home are not going to see everything the referee will see. And in this case, I'm not sure based on what we have. Other than that Ethan Champlin can jump. That I am sure of. You see far, how far over the net. He's only 6'3". Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, call stands. OK. He's actually 6'4 with the mustache. Okay. 6'4 with the mustache? <laughs> I think you had John Spraw at 6'2 earlier, somebody said. Yeah. And then one of his friends chimed in in a text chain that I saw said, 5'11 uh, at best. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, Hawaii loses the challenge. They are down now, like UCLA, with two challenges. Champlin will continue to serve. And on the service air, tied at 7. You're right, he's much taller with a mustache. <laughs> it's not a Fletch situation, but it's close. And speaking of only six foot three, six four, you saw how high Champlin was able to jump. Something that John Spara alluded to. Nice block on the outside. Hakas along with Guillerme Voss. Yeah, and they finally got him right. The ball's a little bit inside. Stayed disciplined, didn't go all the way to the line. This is a nice move by Hawkins. Look, he stops really short. Yeah. And he gets it with the left hand. John Spara told us earlier today when we chatted with the 11th year head coach at UCLA that this is the most physical team he's ever coached. And that included three teams that won national championships when he was at UC Irvine. Well, they're undefeated in warm-ups, including today. And walking into the arena. <laughs> True. Good point. Beautiful set. Oh, what a block. Knight again. He, Knight and Norris have been so impressive to me tonight for UCLA. Lots of times you get the question, which is more fun, a straight down kill hit by you or a block like that? The answer is B. Wrapping around the outside, but getting it with his right elbow. UCLA, statistically the best blocking team in the country with their fifth. Hawaii has eight. Tough serve. Wow, that was close. That was really close to hitting Mucleus. I don't think there was a touch. J.R. Norris is, is looking for a touch. John Spraw is going to throw the challenge card right now, looking for a touch. We're going to be looking at the feet. Uh, Demetrius Mucleus in the corner as he tries not to be a carnival dunk. This ball was also very close to being in, which they can also review when they're looking at whether or not there was a touch or in or out. And this is a tough move for the opposite when you're trying to get around the end. When you're coming from the left back and you're trying to get around the end to get ready for the D, you're moving so fast. See, you're sliding here that if the ball catches you, you're not really prepared to move. Yeah, you're not prepared for that type of reaction. It was a, a very, very attractive leg kick, though. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and is this ball in? Good question. Could be. It did. I don't think it hit. 
dimming. I don't think it hit Mucleus. I'm going to give him an 8-9 on the late oh. kick, but the Russian judge gave him a 7. They're going to throw that out. I thought yeah, that was really are. uncalled for. But the Greek judge gave him a 10.0. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the French judge collected some money and waited to see which oh. one. <laughs> That ball's ruled in? Yeah, that ball's ruled in. An ace for UCLA. That is their seventh ace so far on the night. Mucleus on the night, 15 kills, 38 attempts. Hawkes with 10, Galloway with nine, Guillerme Voss with seven, and Cole Hoagland with six. Wow, Norris again, what a job he has done in so many different phases. John Sparrow telling us J.R. Norris, who's been with us for a while, he's got another year, although he's a redshirt senior, he can still add to that his COVID year. John Sparrow really wants him to come back, because other than with him, then everybody on this Bruin team is coming back for next year. UCLA on a three nothing run. Nucleus. That is a world-class swing by number 11 in black. Here's the thing for Hawaii. For all the momentum of the last few points for UCLA, it felt like, hey, they're playing some quality volleyball. Hawaii's down one. So what? You're the champ. You're good right now. You got your best guy at the line. Transition two, three balls here. You can leave this rotation with a two-point lead. That's a big win right now. Knight again. Perfect reception. And over the top by Merrick McHenry. You said he was hitting it close to 12 feet. You were exaggerating, right? That's close. No, I, yeah, I, no, I, no, think, I, I think he's hitting that I mean, I'm above only half, 11. I'm, yeah. Oh, way above. I'm only half kidding with you, Barney. Yeah. I mean, that is that is one of the highest contact points out of the middle that I can remember. Yes. Consistently, too. That's yeah. the scary part. Yeah. It's one thing to do it once in a while. Good turn down the line outside the block that time of night. Side out for Hawaii and Hawkins. Top 11-10, the wheels turning on the Hawaii sideline. Charlie Wade in his 14th year, back-to-back -back national championships. And missed out of bounds for UCLA, as we talked about with their incredible history, 29 times into the NCAA tournament. They've won 19 championships, but have not stood atop the podium, if you will, since 2006. UCLA has won 19. Three teams have won five. Now, we don't know what the momentum's going to be at the end of this, this set here if Hawaii takes the victory. We don't know if they'll be running away with it or they just get away with it kind of thing, Paul, but I, I would give the advantage to the champs if this gets to five. Their experience, their confidence, the way they've played all year, I would give them the edge, but they got to get there first. Gary Dim is going to maybe be a big part of that. He's had some huge moments this year from the line, lighting it up, and just serving aces cold. Been, he's been quiet so far this weekend. Football. Yeah, I missed that one out of bounds. He can be really effective and a big weapon. Boss will come back on and then be replaced by Brett Schuer, the Libero. Vicious serve. Bruins looking to extend the lead. Good pass by McHenry. A lot of really smart attacking. And a touch off the defender. Kill by Davi. What's the best part of that whole play? You at home, what's the best part of that whole play? Not the kill. It's the defense out of your middle. Yep. Two plays, two critical plays. Good ball handling, good awareness, charging on defense by Merrick McKenna. 
largest lead of the set at 14-11 for McHenry and UCLA. And a double contact. That against Takas, and we've come to the media timeout. UCLA leading it 15 to 11, leading two sets to one. Is it time for 20? We're going to find out soon. For it to be time for 20, you got to get to 19 first, and UCLA dominated the early stages of this championship, started in 1970. Kevin Barnett's Pepperdine Waves have five to their credit. There's our dear friend and Hall of Famer, Marv Dunphy, and the USC Trojans. It's been a bit. This is 1990, the last time yeah. the Trojans won a title. And the UC Irvine Anteaters, Dave Niffin, part of that big tradition there. The title started by John Spira, and they were very much a factor, played their best volleyball at the Big West Championships yeah. this year at the end of the year. Really a talented squad for next year. Look for the Anteaters to once again be a factor. UC Irvine upset Long Beach State in the semifinals of the conference tournament before falling to Hawaii. Semifinals, UCLA beat Long Beach. Really good serving, and Hawaii had to go five sets to take out Pitney, Penn State and Nittany Lions. Oh, David is roofed. Hoagland and Galloway are a small block, right? No. But there's nothing small about how no. far they get over the net. They are undersized, both of them. There is nothing undersized about the finish here. Perfect finish. Hoagland closes, gets the left hand right to Galloway. I think it was Galloway's right hand that put that one straight down. Nine blocks so far for Mucleus and Hawaii. UCLA with only five. What a dig. What a dig by Mucleus. Hawaii got to have it. Again, they don't go away. They just don't go away. I continue to be impressed by Hawaii when teams put pressure on because there weren't a ton of times that that happened, but it's happened a lot. Big West, pressure from Irvine. Here, pressure from Penn State. Every time Hawaii has responded, including in this match, multiple times from the Bruins. And they've done it just by being themselves. They're cool, calm, collected overall play, and their outside hitters were all very similar in the type of ball they hit, are so efficient when facing a big block and moving the ball around with heat and range. One spectacular dig by Demi Muglius yep. on that hammer from uh, J.R. Norris. <laughs> David, big swing. Back to Muglius. Yeah, you bet. And out of bounds down the line. That could turn out to be a big one. This is a break point for UCLA. If you're the Bruins, you want to break away. You want to that 20 to 14 to really be in control here. That's realistic. We got Rowan in the line. He's been serving a ton. Now's the time for a cut. There's so much room in the middle of the court. Rowan's got one ace so far on the night. Galloway dug by Gooch. Tella took a look. And Nucleus off of Rowan. Man, this is high level stuff. Continue to be so impressed with Alex Knight. In reception, he has been absolutely superb. Sub coming on. We saw briefly number 16 come in. Haven't seen much of him. Philippe Humler. Senior opposite out of the Czech Republic will come in briefly for Galloway. 16-14, UCLA leading it, but most importantly up two sets to one. Won the first in overtime, 28-26, lost the second, 33-31, won the third fairly comfortably, 25-21. Back row quick, missed out of bounds. Champlin, Champlin is screaming for a challenge, and John Spira is going to go to the challenge card. It was close. He had a wide open net, did not get great contact. 
but uh, certainly the Bruins thought that ball was in. So challenging in or out on the attack. Give you some, uh, we'll look at some replays and then I'll give you some offensive totals and defensive totals so far. Oh my gosh, that ball's way in. Way in. That's no doubt, you silly point. Yeah, that's not even close. We've had a couple of those. Yeah. But in the referee's defense, look, this, this ball is being hit right around 80 miles an hour. Sometimes it's tough to see it. Yeah, so the challenge is upheld. I talked about the offensive numbers. David with 22 kills, Knight with 12, McHenry with 10, Mucleus with 17, Hawkins with 11, and Chaz Galloway with 10. On the match, UCLA is hitting 341 to Hawaii's 291. But the last couple of sets, particularly in the third, UCLA was really impressive. 17-14 is the lead. Now remember the scheming before that we were tucking people in. We had Alex Knight tucked in on the right side. See if he does it again. He didn't move far. He stayed right where he was. Champlin with the dig. Knight. Ball. Hand in the antenna. Yeah, hand in the antenna, not Hawaii. the ball. Hawaii's hand in the antenna. Yep, yep, hand in the antenna. Timeout called by Hawaii. Yep, Jakob Tella's pinky going high up into the... Yep. And that's good, that's good work by the official. Yeah, Ron Pellin, that happens right in front yeah, of him. He's, yeah. a, he's the up official, the R1, Mr. Arizona. And that is sometimes hard to see when it's right in your face, right next to you. The referee's responsible for so much that's happening. When it's close to you, you don't always see it. Ron, on the spot. Yeah, per really good job. We talked about UCLA's 19 NCAA titles. <laughs> uh, look at Oklahoma State wrestling 34 USC track and field right on down the list. But 19, all of those by the one and only Al Skates. And I know we've said it, but it bears repeating. It has been since 2006. And UCLA has had so many close calls, particularly in the last couple of seasons, including last year against Long Beach at Pauley Pavilion. They had a lead in the fourth, and they could not close it out. But maybe it's time for 20. You know, we talked about the freshman setters who've led teams to a national championship. I got a text from Dave Albright. Yeah. He was a 22-year-old freshman at UCLA in 1976, and he, too, won a national championship. And he wasn't happy that I left him off the list. So now, he's so not off the list he's anymore. Not off Good the job, list Dave. Anymore. So now Andrew Rowan is looking to become the sixth freshman ever to lead a team to a national championship. The other, the great Ricky Ludies, Chip McCaw, both Ludies and McCaw Olympians, the one and only Karch Kirai, Jonathan Winder, now the head coach at Pepperdine and maybe Andrew Rowan. And maybe the wait is over for number 20. Good delivery. Really good set to David. That connection is just magical on the night. UCLA siding out at close to 80% now. 19-14 is the lead, six points away. Dimi asking for the ball. You saw him there. He wants it. Let's see if he gets it. They need this side out, or they get to the number I talked about earlier. 20 to 14, game over. Nuclea 17 of 43 so far on the night. Back row, quick combination. Excellent reception and beautiful offensive volleyball by Galloway and Hawaii. and Black on to serve. Does have an ace earlier in the match. Big swing by Hawkes. Off the block and out of bounds. That back row quick combination for the side out to Galloway. And now Akana doing work from the line. Timeout called by UCLA, and you talked about John Sparrow's strategy as far as timeouts. Early, yeah, very better, early. better be better be too early rather than too late. I can't think of another coach who would call a timeout if you lose one point and you're up three. 1916. 
for the 53rd Men's NCAA Championship. Hawaii has won the last two in a row, looking to become the first program since UCLA back in the early 80s to win three in a row. There have been three UCLA teams that have won as many as three in a row. 28-26 in the opening set to UCLA, 33-31. Just a, a magical set in the second, 25-21 in the third for UCLA. Said that John Sproul will take these early timeouts, right? I think the advantage to that is there's less panic happening. There's less calming down needed on your side. I think you can productively get more done in this timeout than you could if, let's say, it was 1918 right. or 1919. Yeah, that's really a good point. I think then you've point. lost control of the arena. You've lost control of the emotion yeah. on your yeah. side. Right now, tactically, you can insert some things because you have a lot more time and attention from your side. That's such a great point because if it's 1918, the 2,200 Hawaii fans that flew yeah. <laughs> from the islands to Washington, D.C. would be blowing the roof off this place. The other interesting thing it does is it has Hawaii in a timeout when they don't, aren't normally in a timeout. What do you do? <laughs> You've only gotten one point. Knight again with reception and also registering his 15th kill. 15 of 31 with one error hitting way over 430. Just having a maybe the match of his career. 20 to 16. UCLA siding out at 73%. Hawaii at 60%. You win the side out battle. You win the set. Tella runs out of room. And who else again? J.R. Norris, the fourth at the line. What an impact he's had on this match, Kevin. Eight of 11, hitting 727, and that was his fourth ace. If you've had a long college career where you've been in and out of the lineup, a couple different positions, and you finally get something going, this is the time to do it. That, that pass that he took to fall off the top of the net, and pass the swing was outstanding. He's had a number of balls he crushed, including in that 33-30 set, or 33-31 set. And here, man, the serving has just been off the hook. That's been the best part of a player who has hardly been stopped offensively. These points from the service line have been monstrous for his side. Well, he's got eight points attacking, again, on 11 swings, hitting over 720, and four aces, and has also blocked well, defended his position, set a couple of balls, he, along with Knight, for me, have been the players of the match for UCLA. Really good team effort so far. Ido David, where would the Bruins be without him? 23 kills on 46 swings. Knight with 15, Merrick McHenry. Really solid team effort so far for the Bruins. And now Hawaii. The best winning percentage since 2015. At like 90%, they've won 202 matches since 20. 2015. Now Norris has tried to roll it before. He rolled it straight ahead. Boss is in that spot. I would, I would roll it if that's what you're going to do. At the position two or three. Leading 21 to 16. UCLA four points away from number 20. Three oh, points raise. away. Put a cape on that man. What a performance. And remember, did not start. Came off the bench. Came off the bench early, but had an immediate impact for UCLA. On this day, for the rest of time, John Sparrow should send a gift to J.R. Norris. <laughs> this is that's a wonderful performance from the service line. John Sparrow played for the legend Al Skates. Obviously knows the history, knows the situation, and knows the level not sure frustration is the right word, but when you win 19 times from, 19, from 1970 to 2006 and then you haven't won since, this has been a long time waiting. Still work to do. Time for Hawaii. And Jakob Tella at the line. It's got to be now. Night, perfect pass. And a perfect block on the outside by Mucleus.
Henry telling Rowan on a quality pass. Come to me out of the middle if you can. There's lots of good options. Yes. I'm fine with the choice. The yeah, set yes. location was not ideal. Yeah, to McHenry. You knew that was coming, and what a pass all night long by Gooch. I thought, I hope you saw McHenry. He turned around and pointed down at Gooch, said, that yeah. was you. That was all you. John Spira at UCLA won two championships and won a championship as an assistant coach. Can he do it at his alma mater? Knight is blocked. Guillerme Voss. Another timeout for UCLA, Barney. Yep. He's holding. 23. 23-20. UCLA now out of timeouts, as is Hawaii. And another tough play here, predicated by the serve. And that ball is off the net and let a little bit low. Jeremy Boss just keeps working. That, yeah. His best skill yeah. is blocking. Yeah. He is relentless the way he works to go laterally. Even if he's a touch behind the play, he'll stop and get his hands over. He'll push his hands into the gap, push him over. Yeah, Guillermo Voss has been a difference maker for a number of years on this team. And again, on that play, keeping Hawaii's hopes alive here in the fourth set. 1.2 blocks per set for the Brazilian, Guillermo Voss. That gets him in at number five in the nation. 23-20. Crowd comes back alive. Hawaii. Looking for three in a row. Hasn't been done in a long, long time. See how Hawkes responds. Coming out of the timeout. Back to McHenry on the good pass, Barney. I like that option. I like either David probably more than anything right now. David with 23 kills. I don't like the left side. Got a couple of blocks over there. Go somewhere else. Service error for Hawkins. UCLA, four championship points. If you're not, you go for it. 100%. One point away for number 20. Stay down. Didn't block against Mucleus. So one set point, championship point saved. We're going to have John Spira is going to challenge. And I'm thinking back to what transpired in that point. Rachel Jensen, the number two official, has communication with the first referee, Ron Pelham. No, no challenge. Huh. That's, that's interesting. That took a long time for there not to be a challenge. I like no challenge. All right, perfect pass, McHenry. Bad pass, David. Championship point number two. Must have for the Rainbow Warriors. Bad pass. We're gonna we're gonna have a challenge. We're gonna have a challenge from Hawaii. Okay, this I hate about the challenge system. Because we saw this internationally quite a bit. Yes. Yeah, this ruins a moment. Not that it shouldn't be done, it's just an unfortunate factor. Hey, 
Because, because now you nearly crushed and killed your middle blocker, and he might have to play another play. Got Cameron on the floor, got security people on the floor. This looks like the Formula One race last week. <laughs> the ruling on the floor was balled down by UCLA and championship point. Hawaii is challenging either a net violation. I think the only thing they're challenging is a net violation. No one's even close to the net. Your yeah. guy's in the net. Yeah. This is yeah. over. Yeah, this is over. Do the this dog pile again. This is a ridiculous yeah. challenge. DP2, and it's time for 20. get this kind of match it's exactly what we got the two best teams going to overtime in the first two an incredible second set and the end of a drought like the California Reigns here comes a UCLA title we had a good winner in Southern California as far as rain is concerned but this what a run by Hawaii the most successful program since 2015 in terms of winning percentage Two national championships. And UCLA, for the first time since 2006, are national champions once again. They had, and we showed you and, and detailed, the number of close calls they had had over the last several years. Nito David, the emotion of this championship, and how good was J.R. Norris? John Spira now joining us on the sideline. John, you played? You coached, now you've won a national yeah, championship. Yeah. What took you so long? I you know, know the history know. better than anybody. Well, I tell you what, we've been working hard and getting close for a long time. Proud of these guys to put it over the top. I know the alumni and everybody who played who's been waiting so long has been nothing but supportive the whole way. They knew we could do it. Thank you to all the guys. I just, I know how much it's, this is for everybody. This is all, for all the Bruins everywhere. This is an amazing championship. John, what was the score when you let yourself start to think about it? Uh, I, I didn't because oh, okay. even the, Hawaii is such a good, capable team, and they kept coming back and coming back that I was just not letting myself go there. And so I, even at the end, I had a very strong suspicion that they were going to uh, replay that one, and uh, I'm glad it came out our way. J.R. Norris ends his long career with an illustrious performance from the service line in yeah. particular, but also offensively. What prompted you to put him in when you did early on? I know he can kill the ball. And... Uh, I had a feeling that, well, it gets a little complicated there, Kev, but I started in a different rotation than I have been all year, but in order to be successful in that, I needed a little bit more offense in the other spot. So I kind of had it in the back of my mind. I was going to take a look at Guy early, and then I went to JR, and, and it worked. John, you alluded to it. What's in your heart right now? Oh, elation, pride. <laughs> Woo! Dang it, Paul. You're, you're trying to get me to choke up. It's not going to happen. I'm, I'm going to hold off until later. Really proud and happy for everybody at UCLA. Let it go, John. No, Let it go. No, I'm fight it. Wait till the press conference. It'll be there. Congratulations to you. And one final thought from me. I thought that Alex Knight was as good or better than I've seen him all season long. And your freshman setter is, is otherworldly. Not a freshman anymore. Didn't play like it. No, he sure didn't, I think. I'm sure you have the stats, but if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time a freshman setter since 1992 that has won a national championship. So it's, uh, he, he deserves it. He's one of the best. John, thank you very much. Thanks, and congratulations Thanks, guys. Appreciate to you it. and your team and all of your staff. Thank you very much. Completely a team performance. Ido David led the way with 23. Alex Knight, superb. Merrick McHenry as well. As a team, UCLA hits 353 and holds, if you will, 
this Hawaii offense, and what a team from Hawaii. Congratulations to them for an incredible run at 299. And joining us now, courtside, a national champion, J.R. Norris yeah. IV. You've been waiting patiently for this kind of opportunity for a long time. Most definitely. And boy, did you take advantage of it. How did you yeah. feel coming in? Uh, honestly, I just felt prepared. I've been in college for a long time, so this just feels like a culmination of a lot of hard work. Uh, I, I'm honestly speechless. I, there's a lot of people I want to take out the time just to say thank you. My parents, my sister, who flew out just to come and support. Uh, all of the coaching staff, uh, the Bruin family. It's, it's been an honor, and I'm happy to go out on top. JR, you've been here a long time. You've seen a lot of different players come and go. Tell me about the culture, what it was, and what it is now, with your role in it this year. Uh, when I first got to college, the culture was a little different. I was the youngest player on the team. Uh, but now I'm considered the grandpa or the uncle. So <laughs> what I try to do now is just, I don't know, offer any support that I can. And we all pull for one another. It's a great, it's a great culture here. I'm really going to miss it. JR, obviously, you know the historic success of yeah. UCLA Volleyball. Yeah. Tonight is time for 20. What, did, what, did, what was the conversation with you and your teammates about that pursuit this year? Uh, Oh my gosh, as soon as we hit the gym in fall quarter, we just made it known that that was our goal and we weren't going to settle for anything less. I'm really proud of the boys. We pushed and we got here. Congratulations. So. Great team effort. Congratulations to you. Appreciate on it. What you'll never forget tonight. Congratulations, no, JR. Thank you so much, man. Kevin, your final thoughts. Uh, what a performance by UCLA. You know, play your best when your best is required is the old John Wood quote. JR Norris and this team did that tonight and in this season. UCLA, the Bruins are national champions once again. They win it 28-26, they drop the second set, and they win the fourth and third, 25-21, 25-21. For Kevin Barnett and our entire crew, I'm Paul Sunderland. Let's send it to Starkville, Mississippi State, and SEC Baseball.